We are the head coach of the New England Patriots, and year number one is done. The Patriots were 4-13, and then we took over, turned them into an 8-9 and team, a borderline playoff appearance, and it all came down to the Cincinnati Bengals winning in Week 18, knocking us out. So it's time to jump into this offseason, see how our players did, and see how we can rebuild this roster once again to come back and make a playoff push and maybe win the Super Bowl in year number two. So make sure to like and subscribe because the Patriots dynasty starts right now looking at it this is how the playoff picture turned out the baltimore ravens and the minnesota vikings actually took the number one seed but the bears who we did be in week number 16 did sneak into the playoffs caleb williams led a playoff push in his first year so i guess that's a win there the most important thing that you guys need to see is our team stats how did our players perform in the battle between bo nicks and justin fields they got almost the same amount of games bo nicks got one more and actually write it out as the worst quarterback you see it over here but interceptions and yards did beat out Justin Fields running the ball Blake Corm got up to 919 yards as our first leading rusher then Justin Fields and Bo Nix Ramondre Stevenson we're probably going to let him walk in this offseason but Frank Gore Jr. and his carries did pretty well 4.4 yards per carry I cannot take away from that kind of success but then our receiving core Demario Douglas our slot guy got 830 but Marvin Harrison Jr. and Darius Slayton both popped off for over a thousand so you'll love to see that the one thing that was concerning is our tight ends didn't get as involved as I wanted them to this season and defensively we started off the season not getting a lot of interceptions the end of the season we got a lot Marcus Jones CJ Gardner Johnson Christian Gonzalez led the way but sacks was a crucial thing for us we couldn't get our guys in good positions there Matthew Judon led the way with six and a half tied with Carl Lawson, but Judon's about to become a free agent, so do we bring him back? Tackling-wise, Jabril Peppers had such a great year there. Also did have four sacks as well, which is crazy. Tavai in the middle, Mapu, Nakobe Dean, the linebackers have played pretty well. Bentley was a little bit iffy for us, but we did finish our rankings as the 22nd best team in the league. Offensively, we finished at 17. Defensively, we finished at 8, so I think Mike Vrabel is going to come back as our D coordinator. Eric Bianami, though, at OC, I'm not too sure, but it's time now to go through this playoff push and see... Who does take home the crown? And looking at the Super Bowl, Caleb Williams from the sixth seed somehow got his way there. And he's facing off against the Bengals. So it's two last seats in the playoffs fighting it out. There's no way. And you see the Bears barely squeaked out against the Rams. The Bengals, same with the Dolphins. And then they took down the 12-5 and five Vikings. Well, the Bengals snuck one out against the Ravens. So this is just a wild road to tow for both of these teams. Joe Burrow and... Caleb Williams at quarterbacks for both teams, both 9-8 and eight teams somehow got to the Super Bowl, but we do get to look and see if any of our guys did make the Pro Bowl. Jaden Daniels, the rookie quarterback for the Commanders, did make it. At running back, unfortunately, Blake Corum didn't make it, so that's a sucky situation there. Looking all the way through, Marvin Harrison Jr. did make it, so he's our first one. Continuing down now, I'm just trying to see in the AFC, are any of our guys sitting there? Hey, Mike Onowenu is there at our right tackle spot. But the one thing I am concerned about is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Frank Gore Jr. Hey, Christian Gonzalez make it. Same with Marcus Jones. So that's pretty impressive. Two corners there with Jabril Peppers and CJ Garner Johnson. So actually our entire defensive secondary made it, but we need to look and somehow Frank Gore Jr., did not make the Pro Bowl as a return man. Jared Goff, though, did walk away with MVP, and this is all before we get into the Super Bowl. I am concerned with Coach of the Year, and we're not going to be on this list at all, but Marvin Harrison Jr. did almost win Offensive Player of the Year, so that's going to be awesome for his development. Jabril Peppers and CJ Garner Johnson down there for Defensive Player of the Year, but Rookie of the Year, we got two of them here. We should have another one with how well Bo Nix played, but unfortunately he's not. Defensively, we're not going to have anybody. But Blake Corm really got no love in the best running back room. And wide receiver, I do think this is kind of a snub. But from a rookie to put up this amount of yards is crazy. But West, best wide receiver, I still will take a third place. Matt Judon won ninth place for best linebacker, but this is where I need a domination from our DBs. We have one, two, three. Where's CJ Gardner or Christian Gonzalez? He is down at nine. So, so many of our DBs, that DB court that was so big in building up in free agency and with the Jonathan Jones trade. It worked out pretty well for us. But between the two seventh seeds, it's now time to see who will take home the crown. I still can't believe this is the playoff picture. And it is the Bears walking away with it. You're absolutely joking. Caleb Williams in year number one, he's only a 78-79 overall. 
Jaden Daniels and the other quarterbacks progressed better than he did, yet he was able to come back from injury, lead the Bears to a Super Bowl. This is the most unexpected thing. Welcome to Modded Mad. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're still watching, but this is actually insane. So now we definitely need to get our rookies some championships here going straight now into the offseason the first thing to look at is some of the player retirements here von miller walking away chandler jones jason peters martavis bryant not a ton of major retirements coming out but i still can't believe caleb williams who had 18 touchdowns 16 interceptions that's ag counting the postseason somehow led the bears to a championship but first up is going to be the re-signed players now darius slayton did accept one of the contracts we did give him so he's gonna have a pretty significant cap here but we did get a four-year deal, five-year deal out of him. But I think that we are going to fire Eric Bieniemy before we do anything. I want to see some of the OCs that are going to be available. Lincoln Riley could be a big one, and that will help us spread out the field a little bit more in a passing attack because Eric Bieniemy's playbook seemed really basic at some points. Definitely not this guy right here, Matt Canada. But I think we are going to bring Lincoln Riley over. I think it'll be a chance to really expand with his playbook literally spread the ball around but with Mike Vrabel and the success that he had in the 3-4 under look we're going to keep him but we do have 20 contracts up for grabs including the biggest one Justin Fields now here's the thing about him if we offer him a contract he may accept he wants 82 million over five years still a pretty significant deal at running back I'm going to let Ramondre Stevenson walk I may actually bring back Tyler Batty just for some of the minimums but David Andrews also another interesting one I think I'm going to let him walk I may bring back Pat Eflin on a low contract Bearmore did resign this is the one contract I want to get done Tavai was so good for us in the middle Matthew Judon he only wants 2.2 million over one year i'm gonna go ahead and give him this contract one year 3.74 i will be willing to bring him back on that deal will he be the guy anymore maybe not we'll see but even when we gave him the money he wanted he is going to test free agency okay the rap is going to be another guy we are going to let walk at corner though marco wilson and damari mathis i really like mathis we're going to offer him and bring him back just a light deal i'm going to give him a two-year deal because i think he's going to make our roster no matter what but the cool thing is our entire core receiving core comes back Pat Eflin, we're going to offer him a tiny offer. Nothing crazy. We'll see if he does take it. And he's not interested in signing. But with Tavai, he wants an expected value of about $44.4 million over three years. I'm going to give him just a bit over that just to see if we can sneak him in. If not... There is a situation where we let N'Kobe Dean take the reins as well as Mapu in the middle there, but he wants to play for a new team. I get it. That's how this operation is going to work. So we are at this point. We offered Justin Fields a contract. He didn't take it. I'm going to force the cap on him. So I'm going to go ahead, offer him something really, really low just so he declines, just so we can lowball and make him feel horrible. And we are going to throw the franchise tag on him because I think that what we're going to do as it's one year, 50.8 million, we're going to do a tag and trade, which is going to leave us with absolutely no cap left. Hopefully one of these teams takes his contract. That would be something that would be really scary. But mock draft did release, so we'll we'll take a sigh, we'll take a breath looking at some of these mock drafts here. Harold Perkins, Quinn Ewers falling all the way to number three with the Saints. Sam Hartman actually did a pretty good job there. They have us taking Michael Williams at the 12th pick, but maybe we could trade Justin Fields for another second because that'll really change up how we do things. Cam Ward, not a lot of quarterbacks going here. But somebody I see slipping out of the first round. Oh, nope, there he is. Travis Hunter. He would make a perfect addition as a receiver and as a defensive back. But then again, our defensive line is going to be such a huge point for us. But I think I may address that in free agency. And with looking at the Broncos depth chart at quarterback, the only one they have is Daniel Jones. Russell Wilson obviously gone there. They brought in Daniel Jones last season. He came in for a little bit, but they need an option at quarterback and they have an absolute ton of cap space, unlike them in real life who just shipped off absolutely everybody. And so we're going to be moving Justin Fields and a couple of later picks and future drafts for a second round pick this year because I want to bring in young talent that we can plug and play and this will allow a little bit more of flexibility with our first round pick now that we have two seconds so this is going to be the new quarterback room for them while us on the other hand only have Bo Nix there so we're going to need to bring in another quarterback maybe we look to this draft maybe we look to free agency 
but it's time to jump into that. The first thing we need to do in free agency is look at the linebackers. Jerome Baker's sitting there. He kind of fits the mold that we're looking for in this 3-4 look off the edge. Leighton Vander Esch is a pretty solid guy, but I don't think he fits what we're trying to do. Run Ness moves, power moves, not that good. We're looking for more of a 3-4 linebacker while he's more of a 4-3, so he doesn't really fit the mold. Jonathan Cooper, though, isn't bad, but we are paying a lot of money to Josh Olchi. Aziz Olajari also could be pretty well for us. But I think our defensive line took the biggest hit, and this is where we could really bring in some talented guys on the inside. Eric Brown would be a massive, massive pickup for us. But Justin Matabuke, he's going to be our top target, 88 overall. If we pay him a lot of money, we can move him, Christian Barrymore, any of those defensive line guys around. And so we're going to try a three-year deal. I want to see how it sits compared to the rest of the teams. We are sitting in fifth, so maybe I'll up it just a little bit. And I really just want to bring in a top-tier free agent. That's going to be the goal for us as we move up into the second spot now. And it took almost $15 million, but we are first there. I could fall back onto Josh Sweat if that doesn't work out, which is okay, but I just... I want to get that deal done with him, and we're going to go ahead with Tavai being gone. I'm going to offer Jerome Baker, I think. Look at these other guys. Marquise Bell could be decent, but Legereus Need is here. I'm not going to make an offer on him. I'm a little bit surprised even by myself for not going after him, but I just don't see him fitting into our defense with Christian Gonzalez, Marcus Jones. I think a corner is going to happen in the draft. But Carl Lawson did drop down to a 69 overall, which is crazy because of his regression. So Keon White may be the guy there, but I do want to go after a center. Ryan Kelly would be a great replacement for David Andrews, Josh Myers. David Andrews dropped all the way down to a 74. That's crazy. We're going to go ahead and make an offer on Ryan Kelly. And to replace Ramondre Stevenson, we are going to make an offer on AJ Dillon. I think that's a great replacement. Almost the same overall. Kind of the same vibe that we're looking for. I could give him a pretty small deal, and he may as well just accept it. I want to see if there's any other offers for him on the table right now. I'm surprised Eric Henry's not here. He didn't last through the re-sign period. Packers want him back, but we're going to go ahead and still make a move on him. And I'm thinking about bringing in a replacement for Mekhi Becton, but just at his age, how he could develop. It's I don't think it's worth going out now and spending a lot of money on Taylor Decker. And on the inside, Cole Strange... I want to see signs of development. This may be the last year we give him just a chance here, but Kevin Dotson played good on the other side. So instead, we are just going to make an offer on Josh Sweat. Focus on D-line being our biggest focus right now. With Barrymore, him, as well as Justin Matabuke, if they come in, this could be crazy right now. The only thing we'll have to do is move on from Carl Lawson, but there is one more player I still want to move on from. Only problem is the commanders are offering him a massive, massive bag, so it may not even be fruitful for us to do that. And we do have the glitch, but I still made the offer to Josh Sweat. Took the one off of AJ Dillon for right now. We're tied at the top of the leaderboard for all of these guys, so let's see. I just want one of those edge guys and guys in this 3-4, and we lost out on... Josh Sweat. Justin Matabuke is still here. It's going to be a tough fight. And so we did offer Jerome Baker to fill in to Vi's left spot here. But nobody did take their offers. So we're going into a final day. And the Titans and Colts came out with massive offers to Jerome Baker. That's interesting. So we are going to continue here. And Justin Matabuke is still on the board. But we did get Jerome Baker and Ryan Kelly. But still no decision from the man himself. So we do have to find some other offers to make as Derek Brown goes to the Jets. So we're going to have to face off against him now, which sucks. Tua still on the board. I don't want to go out and get him. Kirk Cousins, no. Garner Minshew, no. And one of the trades we are going to make is move on from Juju Smith-Schuster. We owe him like $8.5 in the final year of his contract. I don't think it's going to be worth it to keep him around. We benched him in the beginning of the season because of his poor play. And his trade value is about worth a 7th round draft pick. So we're going to take it, move on from him, and clear up a little bit more cap for us. So these are going to be our targeted. I'm bringing in Zach Wilson as a backup, hopefully. But we're going to move straight in to the next day. First, the combine results are going to be huge for us. But we're not going to take a look at them here. We're going to take a look at them over at the My Franchise tool. Move on to day number two in free agency. Not the best free agencies so far but we did get a good center for us which is huge but i hope we can make a splash with justin matabuke that's gonna be a huge thing and it looks like our offer jumped up so that's huge and we did get matthew judon back so i know you patriots faithful are gonna want to keep him around and we do but i am gonna bring back brendan rice i think he's gonna be one of those receivers that we drafted him last year and he just didn't make the roster but i want him to develop well and i want to fill in space i like his stats but the top tackles did go, so we are gambling there a little bit 
on Makai Becton. And so with the Justin Matabuke trade still in the works, we'll see if it does get accepted. I went ahead and rebuilt the rest of our roster by grabbing some guys like, hey, Louis Cine, if we could pair him back up with Javon Ballard, bring back that Georgia secondary, that'd be sick. But also building back up our offensive line depth with some of the backups we did lose. It's all going to come down to this right here. Can we get Justin Matabuke? And he's still on the board. Dude, please sign. You're screwing over the rest of my free agency. But it would still be a massive win if we did get him. Steven Jones getting an offer from the Dolphins. I think we're still up there. And finally, we get him the next day going through. Justin Matabuke signs to us, as well as a ton of other guys. Brendan Rice is back. Louis Cine is a great pickup. Max Melton there in the secondary as well at corner could develop for us. And we got him for super, super cheap. Austin Jackson, just in case our, either of our tackles fail. And I did throw an offer to Kadarius Tony as well as uh, these offers are still sitting here for these guys and we put ourselves right up against the cap actually it says in the negatives but i'm not sure about that one but we are done with free agency i think there's a glitch between the my franchise tool and franchise itself but i'll show you guys all of the players that we did bring in a ton of rookies there's going to be a ton of cuts that are going to be need to be made the new mock draft is here taking a look at it post free agency has us taken jt to malau out of penn state but in front of it two penn state guys abdul carter and Dennis Sutton. That team in Happy Valley is disgusting. Harold Perkins, dude, such a big, heavy defensive class here. But this is what scares me. Travis Hunter sitting one in front of us right now. Luther Burden, who I think is the best wide receiver in this draft class. So falling all the way to the Cowboys. The first quarterback isn't really, it's just Carson Beck off the board. Shador Sanders going number 30 to the Atlanta Falcons. Donovan Edwards falling all the way to the Bears. I can't believe the Bears won the Super Bowl. But looking at our signings, Justin Matabuke, Jerome Baker, so many good players are going to fill spots for us. The Atir Gross Matos was a light, late grab because really the offers going in for him weren't that good, but we did grab a lot of young guys as well. Another quarterback in Zach Wilson. We're definitely going to draft one, but I brought in Tommy DeVito nonetheless. But we built maybe one of the scariest defenses as long as our guys can develop the right way. This is is it Patriots franchise now it's finally time for the draft and we need to look at this draft class before we jump in the first thing I want to look at is quarterbacks because there are an absolute ton of them but going down we're not going to take a first round guy we need to look to the later rounds to find a replacement or somebody at least just to fill in for Bo Nix I don't think we're going to get a replacement but looking at it here, Jalen Milrow could be an interesting one. The 40-yard dash time is kind of nutty from some of these guys. But Kyle McCord over at Syracuse. May he rest in Ohio State. Can't believe that happened. Will Rogers could be another interesting guy if he falls to us here. Riley Leonard from over from Duke now playing this last season at Notre Dame. That's a good one. Jackson Dart. But if we look a little bit later, Kyle McCord could be an option for us. Donovan Smith out of Houston. Not a big fan of. DJ Ngalele. Once regarded as one of the better quarterbacks, unfortunately not doing so great. He he could be a pickup for us, but I need to look how the cornerbacks all finished up. Travis Hunter ran a 4-4, decent vertical, broad jumps at a 12-5. That is insane. Three cone drills, very good. Shuttle's good. Bench press is what I am worried about, but we all know Travis Hunter isn't the strongest guy in the world. Denzel Burke, another huge guy at Ohio State. I like his bigger frame at six foot. All Actually, all of these corners are all measuring it over six foot. Not a lot of small corners in this draft. I suck, though, out of Washington. I didn't even know he was 6'3", and at 6'3", ran a 4'3", 4, 4 with a great combine overall. Not the best vertical, but I'll still definitely take it. At his pro day, did he run any bit better? Got down to a 4-3-3. Actually, Travis Hunter ran a 4-3-4 at his pro day. But I also want to look at the running backs as well. Trevor Etienne transferring into Georgia. How did he do? Ran a 4-4. Is his strength good, though, at running back? Because I'm looking for somebody that could be a little bit stronger there. But holy crap, Ollie Gordon out of Oklahoma State could be that power back that we're looking for. Trey Sanders, though, somebody I am a big fan of, formerly with Arkansas. Shout out Arkansas. He played there and had some success before transferring over. Actually, no, was that Raheem Sanders? Maybe I'm wrong, but I'll move on. Look at the rest of these running backs here. Any, anything really stand out here in terms of the numbers? If we sort here by 40-yard dash, the fastest one came from Quintron Junkins. The other Ohio State running back. So that's kind of interesting there. Because he is the number one running back in this draft class. But Donovan Edwards, he's the one who's projected to get picked in the first round here. 
His combine was still pretty impressive. Could we get the other Michigan running back to complete the running back room? Because that is technically one of our weakest positions. I also, I think our defensive line is now set because of free agency. I think linebacking core is one of our biggest issues. And, and running a 3-4 Abdul Carter would be a perfect plug and play guy. And in this draft, I intend to make a splash. This is going to be a massive trade. We're giving away one of our future first round draft picks, not the one this year, to trade with the Arizona Cardinals for their first, as well as we're giving them a second and two sevenths to balance it out. The second is going to be coming from this draft. It's one of the seconds that we got in the Justin Fields trade, but I intend to make one massive splash, and this is going to rebuild this Patriots dynasty right here, right now. And so we are here, and I expect Harold Perkins to be the first pick, and he is. He's going to be heading that Indianapolis Colts defense going forward, but I don't know. Their offense not being able to do things is a little bit scary there, but there is something we need to keep an eye on. I'm going to watch it here. Walter Nolan goes in to replace Derek Brown, and this is probably where the first quarterback could go off the board, and it does. Quinn Ewers from Texas going to the Saints. Sam Hartman, obviously not the answer there, but the fourth pick, Mason Graham, another D tackle off the board and we're slowly waiting to see as a corner goes off to play next to Jair Alexander and with only being two picks away I can only cross my fingers as Delone Walker another defensive tackle goes off the board and it all comes down to right here the Broncos don't need a quarterback anymore they need weapons and they need linebackers so I'm terrified that everything could be ruined as they go Michael Williams on the defensive line and so far it's worked so far the plan has worked I'm a little bit nervous as I am gonna go ahead and and select a huge key to our defense going all the way over to the edge rushers. We have our middle linebackers. I want our pure edge guys. And Abdul Carter, with his ability, could be the future for us. Great 40, decent 40 compared. But I think he could be the absolute answer across the board for us. The play wreck, the pursuit, the block shedding. I need that to be a B. That'll be a huge thing if that's not a B. But I'm going to take Abdul Carter. 86 speed, 89 acceleration. An absolute animal for us. At 6'2", 250, edge rusher. Could be the answer there. To compete with Josh Olchi. Hopefully win that starting job there. Strength's a little bit lower than what I wanted. But now we sit and wait. I need to see who the Lions do take. Because this is where it gets interesting. I think you guys can understand the who I want at this pick right now. We got Abdul Carter. We got the great edge rusher. Could be the next great edge rusher. But with the Lions, they need defensive backs. Will they go Travis Hunter? Will this ruin some of my plans? So we are going to skip forward, and they do take him. Travis Hunter could have been the perfect prospect for us to play receiver, to play corner. So we're going to have to make a different selection here, or I might trade back. And so I am going to trade back because it didn't work. We're going to get a first later in this draft and a second, and we are going to get a sixth round pick next year, but we're going to fall back in this draft a little bit. I know maybe didn't quite work the way we wanted, but the Giants are going to move up now into that spot. And in our spot, the New York Giants are going to take JT Tumalau out of Ohio State. And so we're just going to continue in this draft and see where players end up falling. Derek Moore goes to the Jaguars. I do want to see who the Jets do take coming up here. Luther Burden does fall to the Cowboys. But the Jets are going to go ahead and take Carson Beck at quarterback. Rodgers, I don't think, retired. But I wasn't expecting Carson Beck to fall there. But it's interesting now because we didn't see where Tua ended up in free agency. We're going to have to go through and check that after the draft. Because they take Cam Ward. Holy crap. And because we have two second round picks still to play with in this draft, I am going to take the next quarterback off the board. I just want there to be consistency, but I just don't like any of these guys right here. Looking at it, holy crap. Shador Sanders is just not good. And then all undrafted free agents. So maybe can we sit on Shador Sanders or do we take him? Looking at his stats here, he's got great deep accuracy, great speed off the rip, but he just looks so good. This could be a player who could fit for us, but I'm not quite sure. I want a quarterback. Bo Nix is decent. We brought in Zach Wilson. Is this just going to be another person to fill up this quarterback room? So we could reach a little bit and get Denzel Burke with it. And with this draft class just not looking the way I want, I'm going to do something a little unexpected here. 
I'm going to take this pick and I'm going to look to trade back one more time. And I'm going to make this deal with the Bears and I'm going to continue just to pick stack here just because I'm going to try to add depth. I'm going to shoot around to a couple of different players. I think that that's going to be our best option with the Bears wanting to trade up. We're just going to go ahead and let them as they take Anthony Belton. See, we don't need an offensive lineman. And we're going to continue to slide back here. And maybe Shador Sanders will still be available if we do want to take him. He does go to the Falcons. Okay. But I think we are finally going to make a selection here. And I'm going to be taking Donovan Edwards. So I'm going to be repairing up the Michigan running backs. I think that's the move we're going to do because Blake Corm's only at a 75 overall. Hopefully, he will jump up using the progression tool in the My Franchise system. But I think this will be a good another running back for us. So him, Frank Gore, Blake Corum, go to running back core. We'll be good. And we'll look to quarterback in the second round. Because looking at the draft picks we have here on this side, that's going to be a lot of opportunities for us to make some picks here. As Donovan Edwards, 90 speed, 94 acceleration. That is insane. Hopefully, he can be an absolute stud for us. Not a star dev player which does suck but donovan edwards welcome to the roster but picking again right away this is where i do want to go either cornerback or quarterback tight end is an interesting pick we could grab some to see how they do but i do want to grab jackson dart not the fastest in the world but an absolutely strong arm somebody i think could do well but at 4-7 he's still going to have decent speed the thing i like about him is his throwing ability, his accuracy is such a big thing. As I am going to take him here to come in and try to compete. 83 speed, I'll take it from him, but 90 throw power is solid. So we do add another quarterback to the roster. One of our guys is going to hopefully develop. As Jalen Milrow does go to the Raiders, so he's going to be competing with Baker Mayfield over there. And finally here, we are going to go to the secondary Try to bring in one of these corners. I don't know which one I want to take. And I really do want to go Denzel Burke, but... Harrison is also a good corner. Same with Vogue and Xavier Scott. I promise Xavier Scott is more of a slot corner. And I am looking for more of a bigger corner that can play the outside. Denzel Burke could do that. Man to man on the outside could be pretty well paired up with Christian Gonzalez. And I am going to go ahead and take him as we're going to go pick with 92 speed. Love the acceleration. I just want to see his stats. And I've really never had this many picks in the draft, but we're right back out of here after a couple of picks. And the other two corners we were looking at are still there, but I do want to look to the interior offensive line. And Jake Bringstall is still sitting here. Tight end, big physical tight end. Kind of still fitting the mold we're looking for. I mean, he only is 230, but he could be a risk. But I do want to grab him just to fill out that spot. Theo Johnson is our third tight end at a 67. Jake Bringstall could be better than that being a hidden development player. An 86 speed is solid from him. So the draft is going to continue here. We don't pick to the last pick in the third round. And we are finally going to go with the offensive line. Tyler Booker at right guard is going to be our third round pick late third round and he's also a hidden development player so that's another great snag for us it shows his athletic ratings but what I do want to see is his strength rating because he put up 40 reps in the bench press I had him on my list very good pickup here in the third round I think this is why it's important that we traded away and accumulated more picks because I think overall is a very not top heavy draft pretty spread out and i think we could grab some guys and some guys could really jump up using that progression tool so our last pick that you guys are going to see is probably going to be kobe bryant out of kansas i want to grab one more corner at six foot he's only a buck 70 but i think he still could be good for us i'm probably going to move forward with the rest of the draft and i will show you guys at the end but there's really nobody i'm interested in i'm just going to use the last picks to build up some of our interior defensive line and offensive line maybe snag another linebacker but kobe bryant sitting here in the third fourth round if you guys don't know i'm a kansas fan a little bit got a soft spot for him we're gonna go ahead and take him and he is hidden dev there's no way kobe bryant's hidden dev that was a great pick I knew it, his ability, his size, his weight, maybe he could be good for us. Kobe Bryant, that's a huge draft pick for us, but he could be the one that jumps up. I will see you guys now at the end of the draft. And so we need now to look at our draft. A very interesting one it was, and we freaking hit. Not once, not twice, not three times. Four times we hit with great players to our roster. Kobe Bryant turned out to be a 72 that is insane. We snagged a 72 overall, and that's not even with the progression tool that we're still going to see in this one. But Abdul Carter, an absolute beast. I need to know what his stats are 
for his block shedding ability. And his finesse moves are a 61, power moves is a 53, so that's not terrible. Still zone coverage is solid. But we could turn him into maybe a Micah Parsons. We'll have to see how he jumps up. But Jackson Dart is also a 70 overall quarterback, the absolute same as Bo Nix. So I would say trading back in the draft class, trading up and then trading back was probably the best decision. Two first rounders, two second rounders, two third rounders, two sixth rounders, two seventh rounders, the most picks in the draft by far. Let's take a look at how the rest of the teams finished out. Harold Perkins did turn out to be an 81 overall, and we did pass on Shador Sanders, who turned out to be a 71 overall. So not too bad there. Wasn't that big of a miss. Nicholas Singleton, they also drafted, played him in high school. He's a 76 overall. That's disgusting. I can confirm that speed there. Trust me, ran past me for multiple touchdowns. <laughs> but the Dolphins did go quarterback to replace Tua Tungavailoa, Cam Ward, 74. And the Jets also went quarterback, getting Carson back. He's a 74 as well. But the Bills didn't really go any weapons across the board. So maybe going into this season, it's going to be kind of wide open for us. So we talked about it now all episode long. It's the progression tool, the different way that Madden Madden progresses comparative to that of regular Madden. And it's time to run it right now. You run it in preseason week one, and that's going to have a huge impact on overalls. You're going to see it jump up, jump down, but it's based on how they performed and could be random, especially for the rookies. And here we go. First, looking at the rookies, a couple of them had major jumps up going across the board. The Bills right tackle jumped up to an 80 overall already, so that replaces Deion Dawkins as well as a left outside linebacker up to a 77 overall, Josiah Stewart. So a late round draft pick working out pretty well for them. Michael Williams, one of the first round draft picks for the Broncos up to an 82 overall. But looking at ours, this is going to be a difference maker here. Not a lot of movement except for some of our later picks. Actually, with both of our cornerbacks, Kobe Bryant jumping up to a 76 Denzel Burke jumping up to a 73. Jackson Dart does jump up one point. So technically speaking, he's our highest overall. Unfortunately, nobody else really jumped up for us. But looking at the biggest jumps across the board, a lot of offensive linemen. Actually, a free agent running back, Sean Dollars. We'll see who picks him up, jumps up. DJ Ungalele up to a 77 overall. So many running backs took massive, massive jumps. I got to look at this right here. Unfortunately, Donovan Edwards just wasn't one of them. So maybe we did kind of lose the draft there. Looking at our entire team, Blake Corum did jump up, and that's huge for us, up to an 85. Kobe Bryant, one of our rookies. Justin Matabuke now up to a 91 overall. Sydney Snow took a huge jump, maybe over Cole Strange. Now Harrison now almost up to a 90 overall. Christian Gonzalez only jumped up one point, so he didn't get as much jump as we wanted to. I have to take who took the biggest jump overall in the entirety of the NFL. That is going to be Jake Moody at kicker, but also Tyree Wilson, the former first round pick up to an 87 overall. Jamison Williams for the Lions jumps up to a 92. Unfortunately, it just didn't go our way. So many players jumped up. Drake May up to an 87 overall. I'm a little disappointed we didn't get that much of a jump from Bo Nix, still sitting at a 71. Jackson Dart, 71. Zach Wilson didn't take a leap either. And so we made a lot of moves. Our roster looks a lot different, but we finished up this incredible offseason. We gave a chance now for our rookies to come in and play. We got to see how they perform, though, but it's time to jump into the preseason because we got a lot of questions, especially at quarterback. And the way we're going to do this is going through the preseason. So we're going to let the preseason play out, go to the preseason bye, and from here, see how our quarterbacks perform. See, hey, Maybe we need to make a decision between Jackson Dart and Bo Nix, both at the same overall. But then also go ahead and make some of our big roster cuts before game number one. And looking at it, I did set it so Bo Nix and Jackson Dart are going to be really the only two playing in the preseason for us. And looking at the stats, both of them played pretty well. But one thing is the differentiator for me is the completion percentage. Both of them threw two touchdowns, no interceptions. But Bo Nix came out absolutely firing for 416 yards. And then running the ball. Decent numbers coming out from both of our running backs. Donovan Edwards 3.7 is something that I really don't like. Frank Gore didn't get a lot of carries. But Bo Nix did a good job on the ground scrambling around. Also, Donovan Edwards fumble is going to be something to consider. But also in the preseason, looking at our receivers, a ton of guys got reps here. 
Peyton Henders shot our third string tight end and Kadarius Tony both finished with one catch. But Justin Ross and Juwan Jennings, Justin Ross, if you know, we had him on our roster last year. Is he going to continue to make our roster? That's a huge question going forward. But we did go undefeated, so that's a little bit surprising there. Both of our quarterbacks played well. What we do is Zach Wilson may be just keep him for right now because Taysom Hill is gone from our roster, so we're going to keep a third quarterback. But on defense, Jerome Baker, Marcus Jones, Justin Matabuke, all up there. As we did get a ton of sacks in the the preseason, which is great to see. Yatir Gross Mato is also coming in to replace Wise a little bit there is huge. But I'm trying to decide right now going into this season with Justin Matabuke, Yatir Gross Matos, Matthew Judon, is this the time where we switch from a 3-4 defense to a 4-3 defense, kind of run a different look because of how strong our defensive line is and how good our secondary is that'll take the pressure off the linebacking core and allow maybe a better role for Abdul Carter because he can play the outside linebacker in that look. He's got decent zone coverage, but also if we move him into the middle, we can blitz him, run him around, and let Nakobe Dean and Amapu play that outside looks. But we do need to go ahead and make cuts coming up, but I'm really happy with how our team performed. And looking at it, the strength of schedule, we're actually sitting pretty going into this season. A much easier schedule than last season. But the Niners are stuck with a pretty tough one here, as I think we have the easiest strength of schedule comparatively to the rest of the AFC East. The Jets right above us, but we're going to have a good chance going in, but we need to make cuts first. And the first cut's going to be probably at the practice squad. It's going to be Tommy DeVito. He's going to head over there. Zach Wilson, we're going to leave him for right now, but we may make a decision a little bit later at running back, though. These three are going to be our main guys. Tyrion Davis-Price, though, ran pretty well for us. So we're going to go ahead and cut Ty Chandler, leave four running backs on the roster. I like his strength Tyrion, from Tyrion Davis-Price. I wish we still had Tyler Batty. But looking at receiving we are very, very deep, and Harrison up to a superstar X factor, which is just beautiful. But I think Tyquan Thornton is going to be our first big cut at receiver. Keyshawn Butte, we're going to move him back to the practice squad. Julian Fleming is somebody we may move to the practice squad as well, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. He was such a good player out of Penn State, you know, was at Ohio State, transferred over, but just slipped so deep in the draft. That's what happens when you play at Penn State and you're a wide receiver. You don't get the kind of love that the running backs, the offensive linemen, the defense does. And with eight receivers on roster, I'm going to go ahead and move on from David Bell as well. And the sad thing is, we can't move into the practice squad, but now down to two tight end. We have one, two, three, four, five on roster. So I think it's obvious. George Takis, we're going to move on from him. I'll send him down to the practice squad for now. But Hunter Henry is injured, so I'm going to leave these four for right now going into week number one. And at offensive line, we are pretty solid. The only problem is... Cole Strange did not develop, but you know who did? Sidney Sow. So he's going to be the starter heading into week number one. A little bit unexpected there. Tyler Booker, though, could be another guy who's going to come up for us. But we're going to move Joshua Braun down to our practice squad. And I'm going to actually cut Nick Ford. We brought him in on a one-year deal. But with our offensive line shaping up the way it is, I'm probably going to move Cole Strange to be the backup center for right now. And I am going to leave one extra tackle on the roster. I and mean, he is going to be a fringe cut guy, so we will see. But at defensive line, Justin Matabuke is going to be probably moved into the interior. Actually, I think I'm going to do that with Christian Barrymore instead because of the weight difference. And also, Justin Matabuke is 81 speed, which is insane. But I am going to move Sean Martin down to the practice squad. Sam Roberts, he may be a cut guy, honestly. But Patrick Jennings also as well is probably going to be moved to the practice squad. But Tristan Hill is going to be the last one we are going to get rid of. If I need to bring him back, I will. He spent a lot of time on the IR last season due to his injury. Injury. And to save ourselves a little bit of money, we are going to be moving on from Carl Lawson. He dropped all the way down to a 69 overall. That sucks because I do really, really like him. He's just not going to fit our scheme going forward. But we are really deep at middle linebacker. We're going to move him to the practice squad, move Trey Thomas to the practice squad. That means 15 of our cuts are already done. And I hate to do this. I think I'm going to move on from Tay Crowder as well. But we could keep Tay Crowder and move on from Juwan Bentley. That's an interesting situation. Bentley, 83 speed. But Tay Crowder... Just a lesser of a player, which you know, I do hate because Tay Crowder, I am a huge fan of. And with Marcus Jones also getting injured in the preseason, we have a lot of depth at corner. No, Noah I Joby, he's decent. We picked him up in free agency because he did develop a little bit. But I am going to move on from Jerry Jacobs and probably Tyler Hall as well. Denzel Burke, 
He is only a 73 overall, but his man coverage is a 76, which looking at it across the board would put him as one of our better corners, but Noah just fits our scheme very well as well, so I'm going to keep him. But Tyler Hall is the same as Denzel Burke, so I think that's going to be the obvious choice for us. And with Jaquan Shepard, I am going to move him down to the practice squad. But now into the secondary, I want to run all three of these safeties, I like each and every one of them. Luis Cine is a very, very good pickup. His fast, he can run the deep, and he didn't cost us a lot of money. So kind of in that deep drop, he's going to have some success. So PJ Jules is going to be that left out man there. We're going to move him down to the practice squad. We still need to make nine cuts here. Now make that only eight and seven getting rid of roberto sanchez bringing him in to compete didn't quite work and i hate to do this but Tyrion davis price we are going to move on from him free up a million dollars in cap and then looking back at the receiver room i maybe think that this is the time it wants me to cut darius slate yet yeah, no that's not happening but i think i am going to move on from Jawan jennings sitting at 28 years old we have some young guys across the board he just seems like the odd man out in this situation. His speed, athleticism isn't the best. Justin Ross, though, is still young enough where we could maybe have some success with him. But I think Jawan Jennings, in the last year of his contract, so we don't have to worry about re-signing him later. He's going to be gone. And with that, Peyton Hender's shot is also going to be cut to clear up just a little bit more space. And with Sam Roberts being cut, we're going to take a negative 40 thousand on our cap but we still should be fine and with kobe bryant also being injured i think that looking at our depth chart damari mathis played pretty well for us but he's going to be somebody that is just not going to be able to make our roster i gave him a decent deal and we are going to move on from him and we're going to take a pretty solid penalty so maybe i could just move him down to our practice squad and i will and i think max melton is just not going to make the roster well he should make the roster going into week number one but we'll have to put some guys on ir it depends how bad marcus jones hurt he got a partially torn acl so having marcus jones not available to start the season is going to be terrible and a hamstring tear from kobe bryant so those are two massive injuries going into the first week of the season we're gonna be a little hurt at corner but now it's time to jump in and take a look at week number one where we take on the new orleans saints bo nicks will be the starter but Jackson Dart, not too far behind. And with this being our injury report, we're going to have to go in and pick up some guys right away just to fill some spots. And the first thing we're going to do is bring in Kyle Juszczyk as a fullback. I think he'll be good if we do run some of this offense and we use fullback looks. Having him there will be huge, but also using him as a tight end when we really need to. And it may not be Tyler Batty, but it's Tyler Batty. We're going to be going ahead and picking up him at the defensive line to fill in with an Ernest Brown injury and build up some depth there and then Jalen Jones is going to be coming back to the Patriots a couple times he spent minutes on our roster it's just he's one of those fringe guys who never really has made it in the NFL but I do like the ability to have him because his speed his stats aren't too horrible but the Saints are dealing with some of their own injuries Jake Hayner is down for them but they do have a brand new quarterback Quinn Ewers on the roster for them and I'd love to point this one out here the San Francisco 49ers have the hardest strength of schedule in the league and they're without Nick Bosa Christian McCaffrey Brock Purdy Chase Young and Debo Samuel but the former first overall pick in this past draft Harold Perkins is missing week number one there but in this week number one we are favorites going into the game looking at the Saints currently one of the worst rated teams in the league their depth chart kind of shows it here Alvin Kamara all the way down to an 80 overall Chris Olave being really the only good receiver on that roster that we need to worry about I mean McMillan's good and he'll be one of those younger guys that we need to watch out for but their offensive line especially in the interior maybe we could take advantage of that Barton somebody I'm definitely going to try to go after in the blitz but defensively their whole front group of guys that front seven with their defensive linemen and their linebackers just aren't good their secondary is actually pretty decent but I definitely want to try to beat them on the ground today and they're running that 4-3 look Brian Brees in the middle is the only one I need to worry about so we need our new pickup Ryan Kelly to have a good day there but we need to go set our season goals and make sure that nobody else gets injured in this week of practice and against Quinn Ewers I just want to stop the medium pass it says Sam Harden but I think it's going to be Quinn Ewers but offensively I want to run the ball against them and we're going to try to stretch it to the outside get away from Brian Brees in the middle and our game plan is one interception we should have the ability to make it happen but hopefully no more major injuries going into this week the Patriots dynasty should begin 
right here and across the board offensively it looks like we are pretty solid but on the defensive side it looks like we are also good which is huge for us so our goal this season is to make it to the playoffs that is going to be our lofty goal we have a pretty easy strength of schedule and an early bye week this year so we are going to commit to the playoffs and making a run at maybe the Super Bowl I'm not going to lock that one in though but our offense is up to an 85 overall and I want them to dominate the Saints today we finished with the 17th best offense going into this season I want to get that number top 10 and I want to keep our defense top 10 in the league so 10s across the board and maybe if we can get our power ranking our overall ranking within a 10 as well that would be huge and I want to run the ball today Donovan Edwards Blake Corum the best backfield to ever exist we have absolute weapons today the one thing that's interesting is I want to see how we can fit Kadarius Tony into our offense that's going to be such an interesting game plan today because with his juke move his speed is awesome I may use him as punt returner as well keep Frank Gore Jr. as kick returner though obviously and before you jump in if you want to see what our roster is sitting at now now, this is what it does look like. Across the board, I'm happy with our offensive line. A lot happier than I was last year. I just need Mekhi Becton to absolutely step up. If it really becomes an issue, maybe I'll switch the two tackles. But defensively, it's going to be weird to see how we can use Abdul Carter and really bring him into the lineup successfully here. Also, Mapu may be getting the start at middle linebacker sooner than we think if Bentley can't play well. But our secondary is our strong point. I mean, our defensive line still is as well. But then at specialist, this is what we're going to have. Sub linebacker look. Abdul Carter is going to be getting some looks only because it's 87, 86 speed. But at 81 speed, maybe I'm going to replace Yatir Gross Matos here with Matabuke and move Bearmore rushing in the middle. But at slot corner, because he's got 93 speed, now Christian Gonzalez is going to be playing there, which means Denzel Burke's going to get some looks at the outside. And at power back, Donovan Edwards. And at third down running back, Frank Gore Jr. Slot receiver is going to remain the same with Demario Douglas. But it's time now to jump into the game. And you might ask, what are our goals for this season? One, Marvin Harrison Jr., Offensive Player of the Year. If we can get him to that number, that would be great. Also, get an answer at quarterback. Is it going to be Jackson Dart? Is it going to be Bo Nix? Or do we need to freaking move on and find ourselves an actual quarterback? And that could include trading for a big name pocket passer. That could also include we're trading up in next year's draft. And finally, defensively, how can Abdul Carter fit into our system? And what other moves do we need to make there? Is Jawan Bentley the answer at middle linebacker? Those are some of the big questions that we need answered, especially in the first couple of games of this season. But I don't know if the quarterback one's going to be answered that quickly. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed about how we built this roster. Really an emphasis on building it up and then being able to plug a quarterback in to find success. If you look across the board, we have so many players with very, very high overalls outside of the quarterback spot. And that's just how that's going to work. But Bo Nix is going to be retaining as the starter. Let's see how we can do it here. He's got the speed. The awareness is just the big issue with him. And we just need to make sure to limit turnovers this season with Bo Nix. If we could keep him under 10 interceptions, that would be huge. We are going to go out on a screenplay to start. Run to the edge with Douglas. And that's a decent start to the season. I want to get as many completions as we can. Maybe if we can get him to 3,000 yards passing. That would be huge, but a good season from him would we'll see him getting probably 35,000. I'm sorry, I mean 3,500, but switching to a run here, Blake Corm up the middle. is going to have a little bit of a hole jumping up, and he's going to make it a third and one. But Blake Corm may have a little bit of a revenge tour started this season. If you remember, he finished just under 1,000 rushing yards, so a little bit depressing from him. But we do get the first down here to keep this drive alive with him. But I'm still so excited about the draft class. Obviously, I wanted... Oh, Bringstool's wearing number 12. I didn't even see that. So, okay, we need to make sure to change that after this game. But the rookie's going to get his first catch. And one of the first catches of the season here. The big tight end coming in for a good grab. Oh my goodness, I can't believe he's wearing number 12. He said he was wearing number 3. But Frank Gore now checking in. But I'm so excited about this draft class that we built. I mean, across the board, I really just use it to fill in holes. And a lot of those guys really could turn out to be incredible. Even on the defensive side, you look at the, some of the corners we drafted. That's just insane. As we do get sacked here by Brian Brees up the middle, trying to go on a jailbreak screen, not getting out quick enough. So they may kill this drive here. Hopefully not. Kelly in the middle. I love the cowboy collar from him. As we're just going to go to Demario Douglas for a nice easy grab. Breaking one tackle, making it third and 11. Bonex still starting 4-4 four four in this one. But we haven't gone to Harrison yet. 
and we won't here on their third down as we throw to the sideline it is just out of bounds bone Nix couldn't complete the ball as we are gonna have to punt away on the first drive here of the season but we did see some good glimpses as Beringer, who had a rough season last year is gonna come in with this punt hopefully he doesn't go into the end zone Especially with the wind, it's going to land all the way down at the 11-yard line. So it is going to be returned straight up the middle. Good tackle by tight end Theo Johnson along with Mapu. But Quinn Ewers, the top quarterback in this draft class, is going to be coming out. And he is going to be interesting. How will we shut him down? I need to change his face mask because that is ugly. But I am excited to see where he does end up. I did expect him to come into the draft this year, but he just didn't. He had Texas and led him to a pretty successful season. Did have a great wide receiving core, though. But up the middle, it's going to be Williams getting the first carry of the game. Not Alvin Kamara, but Justin Matabuke there on the tackle. Hey, his first ever snaps as a Patriot does result in a tackle. And this year, I do want to use her the safety a little bit more as they do throw to the outside. And it's missed from Quinn Ewers. I think Joby in coverage there. Good job coming out from him. Good man-to-man. -man. That's what I liked about him. And we are going to bring a five-man pressure here on this play baker in the middle i need to go through and make sure all everybody's numbers are set as we do get some pressure rolling but they complete it there to the tight end and actually that's the receiver that's mcmillan with the grab because i'm going to continue just to apply pressure on quinn ewers make the rookie make a mistake here as they do go play action we're gonna be running after it here but in coverage, I think Joby lets it up again to McMillan. But defensively, we did not move on from Mike Vrabel. So we're going to be running a pretty similar defense. And I kind of think it worked out. So I'm really going to have no issues with it. As they are going to go jet sweep here. But we're all over it. Matthew Judon, I'm so glad we brought him back. And brought him back for a lot cheaper than what I thought. And so it is going to be a third and two. But I'm just happy with how this defense turned out. I'm really not going to change a lot here. As they go to it again, the jet sweep. And that's A.T. Perry. On the run, they did two back-to-back -back jet motions. Are you kidding me? So the Saints are going to get a fresh set of downs. Driving down the field here as they do go run. We're going to take this outside seal here. And a good tackle coming out. Mapu again getting involved there. He's going to get so much playing time this season. I love the way the season finished with him. The only times we really struggled is in man-to-man -man coverage, which I don't want that to happen. I don't want those looks to really be a big factor here. So we are going to roll across, and he's just going to be outside to the tight end again. It's going to be third and eight, and this is where I really want to bring the pressure as Abdul Carter gets the tackle. But looking at such a massive draft class, they can't even fit everybody in there. But even the offensive lineman we drafted, Taylor Booker, or Tyler Booker is going to be an absolute stud for us as Gonzalez is going to come on the blitz. So I'm a little bit worried he's not in man-to-man -man coverage here. As this pass is just goes wide right comparatively to where the receiver was. CJ Gardner-Johnson there in coverage. And we are going to force a punt as they are going to try to pin us deep here. Bad coverage from our wing guys. As I'm just going to try to let this one bounce in the end zone with Kadarius Tony, And it doesn't. So we're going to be stuck here at the six-yard line trying to get this drive rolling. I am just glad that we didn't fair catch it at the four-yard line because it would have been even worse here. But a run play to the outside. It's going to be a holding call. But Blake Corum off to the races making moves. And Blake Corum starting off hot. If you remember, he finished last season so unbelievably bad. But one thing that did kill us last year was the holding calls. This one's going to be on Mike Anawanu. And that is going to be terrible. Luckily, with our backs to the end zone, we're not going to have much movement out of it. Because I am just going to try to run it here to get our backs out. And just the patience. For, we were didn't have it and it was a bad run again and I am afraid about passing here because we can't let up a safety as our first score given up but another holding call is going to come out on us as we do get the first down from Frank Gore on another good run so we're absolutely Palaxico bursting ourselves right now if you know it I say it a lot you know that's just what happens we Palaxico burst ourselves now we're backed up all the way almost against the goal line here Donovan Edwards is going to check in for his first carries and this is what I'm excited about you know, focus on the positives here. Kyle Juszczyk at fullback could be absolutely disgusting as this run up the middle doesn't go for much. Only two. As we are going to try to go to the air here on third and 13. And I'm going to throw it to who else but Harrison as he almost gets the first down. It's fourth and one. And we're not going to risk it here. I am going to be going ahead and punting this ball away and getting our backs out of this end zone. The Barringer is going to be pinning them hopefully across the midfield stripe. That's going to be the goal here is we're going to come down. And we're right there to make the tackle ready and willing there. Seen a good rundown. But luckily enough, the Saints did jump to start this one off. Denzel Burke in a corner. I'm very excited to see about his development. But they do go to the air early here and out to the outside. If we could just make the tackles, McMillan with another grab. Chris Olave has been shut down so far. But McMillan on the other side is just absolutely feasting. But that's going to be the end of the first quarter. 0-0 scores so far to start off this game. 
Not a lot of movement from both sides, but the Saints winning the field position battle. Onyx isn't playing bad ball so far. I'm happy about that. He's coming out, slinging the rock. I think only one or two incompletions so far in this game as we do bring a heavy blitz here. We should have them all bottled up, but he breaks it to the outside. And all of a sudden, he's off to the races. Williams, our guys can't give chase. It took two broken tackles, and Williams gets into the end zone. There's no way we had that edge sealed perfectly. But our guys just couldn't wrap up there. And that was CJ Gardner-Johnson just getting absolutely stiff-armed into the next century. That's an absolute killer. But the Saints are on the board first in this one. So the game finally opened up with a score. But it's time for us to get back at it now. Let's get our offense finally rolling. We're not going to have our backs pinned against the end zone as a Frank Gore return. He should have been an all-star, all-pro last year return man. Unfortunately, got snubbed harder than I've ever seen because he was putting Devin Hester to shame here. Starting out, we are going to go the play action look. I am going to test it here out to the outside. Can we get Harrison one-on-one -on -one almost able to bring it in? But now I do want to go back to that screen play. And as long as we allow the pressure to kind of get set, we should be good. It is caught by Slayton. And Slayton's got running room a little bit here enough for the first down. It was a little bit hectic there. A lot of traffic running through, but we were finally able to get it to him and get the first down. I tried to let that blocker engage in it. You saw it there, 55 I thought that was Pete Warner for a second, but it wasn't. But he able to engage, we're able to get that ball out and for the first. And with the box not being that stacked, we are going to go to a draw play now up the middle. And it's just a bad block there from Kevin Dotson. Or is that Sydney So? That just didn't work out. And it looks like they are bringing a blitz here off that left side. So if we can do a quick slant right behind it, maybe we could have some success. And we're going to hit it quick in that hole, and it does work. The safety did back up last second, but a good audible coming out to help us get some yards. And this is a huge third down here if we want to be able to put up points. It's going to be DeMario Douglas right in the middle. Just catch it, fall down, and we got the first. Bo Nick starting 8 of 10 for 65 yards. Not a lot of risky throws so far, just nice and easy from him. But I do like this one-on-one -on -one look here with Slayton. But across the middle, I do see it. And that's going to be Kadarius Tony getting his first catch with Harrison jumping to the sideline for this one. That was actually Slayton on the left-hand side. So our whole wide receiver core getting involved here as we got Bo Nix now in the run. And Bo Nix to the outside just go out of bounds. Take the good run of six. As maybe here's where we can take a shot to the end zone. But we do have a good holding call. That's going to be called against us. You'll love to see it. We are getting absolutely criminalized with these holding calls right now. As this one on Ryan Kelly now. So we just need six. Sydney So and Dotson, and we got every single offensive lineman called today for a hold. That is insane. So now we really have to pick this one up, and I'm going to take a shot here. Harrison almost going up. I wanted to throw it into double coverage. I was just trying to put it back shoulder, and it didn't quite work. And so on third and 14, we now need to focus on getting ourselves in field goal range. But out to Slayton. Can we get the first down? Slayton falling forward, and he does get it. Slayton, another crucial catch on a third down. Such a good play there from Slayton, but the run up the middle with Frank Gore. He's trying to bob and weave, and he gets up for a good run of four. And we're going to keep this Lincoln Riley offense kind of chugging here. Something we're not used to, but I like the way it's feeling so far as Frank Gore's breaking tackles and getting up for almost the first again so many people called for me to use him more at the end of last season unfortunately though he just struggled with injuries throughout his rookie season but as a third in inches can we do enough here to pick up this first down it's a run up the middle Blake Corm getting us all the way down to the two. So far, a slow showing from him to start this one. Unfortunately, the holding calls kind of took away his biggest runs. But Frank Gore is going to jump in to try to carry this one into the end zone. Up the middle, we just need him to fall forward. He's down at the one. But now Donovan Edwards and Kyle Juszczyk are going to check in. And Juszczyk clears the way for Donovan Edwards in his first career game to get a rushing touchdown. So using three different running backs, a true three-headed monster there is absolutely impeccable as we do tie up this football game, hopefully after a Sly field goal here. And Sly is going to be able to put this one through. I'm happy we brought him in at kicker. But we still have a lot of game left to play, and it's crazy looking down to the bottom of the screen. Michael Penix lost the starting job to Gardner Minshew at quarterback, which is crazy. And Jalen Warren won the starting spot at running back. So Najee Harris pieced out and went to the Bears. So a lot of movement in this past offseason. So it's going to be exciting to see the teams that we face and what moves they made 
going forward, but a pitch play coming out here is I would definitely go right back to the run if I was them, but Abdul Carter having the speed to seal the edge, I cannot wait to see how he continues to play for us because with his speed at a sub linebacker role, he can kind of do it all here. Is out to the outside. This one's way over the head as Jerome Baker there in coverage doing a good job and coming over from the Dolphins. I'm really excited to see with his 88-89 speed in man-to-man -man coverage. We kind of have him just run around with running backs, just have an absolute great time with it. It's going to be super, super good for us. Is any in-breaking routes here? We're trying to take away, but breaking tackles and getting enough for the first down is Chris Olave getting his first action on the day. Actually, that wasn't Chris Olave. Oh, wait, that was Chris Olave. My bad, but we are bringing a blitz here as they do go to a play action. Looking across the middle, instead going to the outside here, we lose him in coverage and Olave's off to the races now. Chris Olave down the sideline into the end zone. So two big plays given up from our defense there. I think that was Denzel Burke in coverage on the outside. As Denzel Burke, the rookie, does get burned in his first appearance. As this extra point goes no good. So, hey, got to take the little victories when you can. But we got to go ahead and match this touchdown here from the Saints before we head into the tunnel. And looking at the bottom, it looks like the Colts are off to another rough start. Anthony Richardson, two interceptions. As we're going to try to return this one here. And Frank Gore Jr., I'm so glad he's back. As he's going to be an absolute beast this season, just returning kicks for us. And this is another reason I brought in Bringstool. I think his blocking is going to be sufficient enough where we can get the edge here as he does get the tackle. Or, sorry, the block is... It helps Blake Corum get up the field. And I think he's going to do a much better job than Taysom Hill did in the blocking schemes. But also leaking out, he does have fast enough speed and movement where we can just make things happen as Blake Corum off to the races again for a first down. 7 for 28 right now in this game. He's leading as our number one back, but that does bring us to the two-minute warning. So we got our runs out of the way. It's time to go out of the air with Bo Nix. And we've only hit Harrison one time in this game so far, but we are going to go to him here as he just settles right across the middle, and he's going to get up for a good gain. And we're going to kind of sit in this hurry-up look now. Just trying to get our guys open. Let him run in open space. We have so many different playmakers here as Harrison makes another catch, and he actually beats him to the sideline and just stepping out of bounds. Bo Nix, 12 of 15. You love to see it. As if they do go too high here, maybe we could split it as we are going to try to take a shot, but we do get sacked by Arden Key, and I am going to burn a timeout here just to kind of reset. The offensive line kind of failed us there. Maybe I backed up too much, but also Douglas got jammed pretty hard off the line there. I was really staring down that deep post, but one-on-one -on -one to the outside is going to be Harrison I want to take a deep shot to him here. Can we bring it in? Almost just getting tipped up there. So it is going to be third and 22. And we are going to leave Blake Horm in the block here because we are going to try to throw it to the sticks in a four verticals concept. And we're going to throw it across here. I see it open, but the safety jumps in front of it there. And that is going to be a punt coming out from us. We couldn't quite get it out in coverage. And I just need Barringer for a good pin deep here. Hopefully the power wasn't too much with seven mile per hour winds. It's going to land right at about the 10 yard line. And we do get a return coming out from the Saints. And we get a face mask from Uche, which is terrible. We cannot have that happen. We are just kicking ourselves in this start of the season. So they start at the 30-yard line now. Just not what we needed. And we know they're going to go to the air. We have to sit in solid coverage here now as they are going to leak this one out. Probably actually take a shot deep with it. Quinn Ewers really got overzealous on that one. But that was Yatir Gross Matos getting there to the quarterback that time as Quinn Ewers just trying to scramble out. As they go to the air one more time, quick and easy underneath. Olave's breaking tackles, and Olave's off to the races again. Can we please chase him down? We brought a blitz, and we can't get the dive, and Olave's in for the touchdown. We started last season 0-4. We cannot afford that kind of start again, but here the Saints, Chris Olave just torching us as Denzel Burke misses the tackle, and he's actually going to get benched for the rest of this game. As in week number one, we're already going to need to come back. So Louis Cine is going to come in at strong safety. CJ Garner johnson is going to move down, play a little bit more corner for us he's got good man-to-man -man, good zone so that should be fine there especially against Chris Olave but hey we get a face mask as well here from the Saints so we're gonna get bumped up to about the 35 to start this drive but I do want to cut the lead here as they bring a very heavy blitz right away we're gonna hit the crosser from Harrison and now Harrison's off to the races Harrison down the sideline already picking up some great yards from us so a great start there is Harrison already over 66 yards on the day and you know what's great still that we have Lattimore playing the right side so Harrison's one-on-one -on -one against like a 70 overall corner and we can just pick on that all day long as long as we can complete the pass passes to him, but Bo Nix still isn't going to be perfect. He's still a 71 overall, didn't get the kind of development that we wanted, so it does suck, but we still are going to be okay here as Frank Gore leaks out, and he's going to get enough for almost the first down as Mike Anuendo goes down with an injury, so that's not a good look coming in now. Luckily enough, we brought in replacements during the offseason. 
As we are going to try to get Corum just to leak out here. And Corum just run to the sideline. Please break some tackles. And I'm going to burn a timeout after that one with 30 seconds left. And luckily enough, he will be able to come back into this game. I see him in down there. As we are just going to try to take a shot. And I see it. He got burned. Demario Douglas, welcome to the game. It's the wheel route once again. Getting the corners confused. The switch is going to put in a score before halftime. And hopefully that'll be it. We're going to go into the tunnel with only a six-point deficit to our name. Demario Douglas doing a, such a good job there. Just confusing the cornerback look and getting himself into the end zone. Finished with 600, 700 yards, if I remember correctly. But I would love to continue to have him have some success this season as we do put in the field goal. Cut the lead to six. And Olave already 150 yards on today. So we need to make sure to make, like shut him down in man-to-man. -man. So I may switch it up. And it should be CJ Gardner-Johnson. Or it's Max Melton actually now, which is awesome over there. On top of him as they do scramble it out out to the outside max melton's gonna let up the completion as maybe we'll just sit into some zone and just hope that we can make sure to bottle him up here as scrambling out it's gonna be dumped off to Kamara and abdul carter there for the tackle as the clock can twin continues just to dwindle down here i would love an interception a turnover something to go our way here is across the middle actually out to the outside it's caught in a good breakup there i can joby there with a solid solid breakup and we're gonna be able to roam here with jerome baker i don't think quinn Ewers is the type of quarterback where he is gonna take off so instead, we're just going to sit on any in-breaking route here. Actually, out-breaking route, as this one's just going to be tossed out of bounds. Is getting pressure there. I think that was Barrymore, and it was on Quinn Ewers. So we're going to go ahead, return this punt, and then take it into the half. Sitting 14-20, to 20, not too bad. But definitely, definitely could be better from our defense. Our secondary kind of slipping up. But then again, we don't have some of the guys that we want as Kadarius Tony just gets taken down with one second left. And looking at the stats, running the ball, we have 48, but passing... 164 it's just our defense that struggled so far in this game letting up the big explosive plays and we are starting out here on defense and after the saints got a pretty solid return up to the 41 our defense comes back out as they do go to the run here to start and alvin Kamara, we're bottling him up there no runs from him in the first half which was a pretty you know unexpected i expected them to run the ball a little bit more but now they sit in a five wide look Hopefully we can drop right underneath, sit down with Abdul Carter in a zone look and have some successes. Instead, they hit it to the sideline and we just miss with Jabril Peppers. So another explosive play to start it off here for the Saints. This is now Zay Jones as we just can't get anything working. I was trying to lock on there and hit play receiver, but it just didn't lock on the right way as that one does go for another big score here for the Saints. As they are going to try to go for two just to maybe put some points up on the board. Get it back to a 14 point lead. And they do kind of run it here with Kamara. But we're all over it. Abdul Carter making another great tackle. So I think we can all agree that's not the start that we wanted. That's actually awesome. So we're going to have to sit here and try to put this game together. Get some good returns, but no, we get absolutely no blocking. And starting at the 13-yard line, we're just really, really going to have to go to work here in this game. Douglas on a whip route could open up right away for us, and it does. Douglas to the outside. After the touchdown catch earlier, he's got enough for nine. The running game hasn't been that explosive so far in this one, but then again, the holding calls that have come with it have just been so bad. As we're going to try to cut this one up a little bit and Blake Corum, another good run. That one, finally, maybe you can call that an explosive run, but I definitely love that coming out from him. As we are going to continue to feed it here, and as long as Harrison can get a good block here on Pete Warner, we should be chilling here. So we're going to cut this one inside. Blake Corum trying to find a hole, but he's up to 40 yards now on the day, and we're going to go back to the air. Starting off, though, we are just going to dump it off to Frank Gore on a screen look, and he's going to have enough room to run away from some of the defenders here. We couldn't have a good cutback lane thanks to the defender giving chase, but at a third and five, we need to pick this one up and quick to the outside. Hopefully, Stool can pick it up, and he does. Bring Stool getting us enough for the first down. I really like him at tight end, but he kind of jammed out there a little bit quicker than I thought. But luckily enough, it did work as we just need to continue to have guys sitting in. As across the middle, Harrison's able to fit this one in right behind the linebacker and bring it in himself. 20 of 26 from Bo Nix. I'm just loving the way our offense is feasting right now as they go heavy, heavy pressure. And I'm actually going to try something here. Bring Stool up the seam as they bring heavy blitz. And actually, we try a deep shot to Slate on the other side, but the blitz just came way too quick. Maybe I should have checked it to a quick slam, but I was worried about the press coverage coming off there that our guys weren't going to be given enough time. As they do bring the blitz here once again, we're just going to hit it to Douglas nice and easy across the middle as he does get the first. But Douglas at 60, Harrison at 60, Slayton almost at 60, but we're going to go to him here on a jailbreak screen. Just dump it off and kind of let him run up the middle, but not getting too much working. He's only sitting about 30 on the day so far, but now we get some other guys checking in. Harrison is one-on-one -on -one with Lattimore now. 
As it is maybe going to be Tony. And if Tony can get open here as we do try to throw it to him, it just took so long there with the extra jam on the top of the route. So that does kill me. And we definitely need to pick up this first down as we throw it to the slant. And Slayton's got it enough for the first again. Slayton. He we're really just using him to pick up third downs at this point. That's the only way he's become relevant for us. But hopefully being man-to-man -man with Pete Warner here, if it is man-to-man -man coverage, should maybe have enough of the first. Instead, we're just going to drop it off to Quorum to get a couple yards on the play. I thought about maybe trying to force it in, but I decided against it. Take the easy yards first, which, hey, that's called growth, ladies and gentlemen, as Bo Nix on the run. Can we get a juke move from him? No, we don't, but we do get a solid run and no fumble. And on third and two, we are going to run... A QB draw up the middle. Try to get it here. Bo Nix getting it into the end zone. The QB draw worked. I didn't, didn't expect it to work, but it did work enough to get us not only the first down, but the touchdown here. Bo Nix getting off the edge. Good blocking coming out from our interior as we're slowly going to try to climb our way back into this one today. We just still need to get a good field goal from Joey Sly. And I love that our thing is no longer there. That's a glitch. That's awesome. So we're going to have to deal with that for the rest of the game. Oh, thankfully it came back on the kickoff, but that's going to be great for us here as we do kick this one back off to the Saints. And if you guys made this far, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching so far. And let me know what moves do you want to see throughout the season? Because definitely this is not the set. The roster that we start with is not going to be the roster that we finish with. We're going to have to make moves in between. But also what players do you want to see me roll with? And you know, if you want to critique my gameplay... I get it. <laughs> no, but we're going to sit here back on defense. Hopefully we can make some good plays as the Saints do jump. And we actually are going to be switching around our lock-ons as we do maybe get this interception. No way. I dropped with Bentley perfectly, but they slid underneath it. Luckily enough, it was still dropped. But we are going to switch the corner coverage to overall. And that should help us out a little bit here because Christian Gonzalez is going to be kind of following around a little bit more here with... The man, the myth, the legend, Chris Olave, who's dominating this game today as we come up, make a good tackle with Jerome Baker in the middle. But let me know what you guys think about this linebacking core. I'm really just interested to see how this linebacking core all comes together with Mapu, with Nakobe Dean and the rest of the guys on this roster. It's going to be interesting to see as a good break up there from Christian Gonzalez. And that's why we want him on Chris Olave as we do force the Saints to punt this one away here. And with Kadarius Tony sitting back, you never know what's going to happen. And maybe some of you guys are mad that I did bring in Kadarius Tony. I'm a Giants fan. Trust me, I don't like Kadarius Tony. But hey, maybe this can help rejuvenate us here of the, our love for the rapper, the wannabe rapper, I guess. SoundCloud man, the myth, the legend himself. But I do want to continue to feast on the run a little bit here up the middle. Not a lot going, but we could just break it right off the tackles. But we should get enough for a good gain. And that's five. And I'm all for continuously just feeding that here. As with this curl concept, we can get a one-on-one -on -one look. It's not going to work, but we are going to go out to Frank Gore. And if we could just make one guy miss, and we do, Frank Gore is going to have enough for the first down. As Savion Jones goes down with an injury, they're good interior guy. We keep this drive alive here. Now starting back with another first down run. Maybe a little bit too predictable here, but up the middle, we just got completely bottled up. Blake Corm, ever since Jacksonville Jaguars week last season, kind of slowed down on his big explosive runs. We haven't had a lot of them. And I'm going to check this to a simple underneath concept. I don't want to do anything crazy here as Harrison's going to be sitting as it is going to be intercepted under pressure. The throw just goes a little bit wide and Tyron Matthew hauls in the interception. That one, he was just hit as he threw and it was just a little bit off centered. That's an absolute killer for us. We needed that to go right that whole drive to put up some points as they do go play action. And we're going to roll out here with it. And that's going to be a good tackle on the outside again coming out from Christian Gonzalez. But Quinn Ewers only needs to throw 11 passes in this game and he's got three touchdowns. We just have no answer for those explosive plays so far. You know, that, that was kind of a key for us in the beginning of the season last year too was stopping these big, drawn-out, long, explosive plays as they do get a first down. And Matthew Judon goes down with an injury. So Josh Uche is going to have to make plays there and come in and support. Hopefully it's not the other guy. I think I said it's where this Josh Uche. So them in the middle, they are going to go pass again. And we're going to run out with this tight end, and we're not able to force the incompletion. Both of our top-tier safeties in coverage, neither of them able to make a play. And it's actually going to be White rushing off the edge. So that's actually fine. That's more than okay. It was White's there. It's going to be a read option. And Quinn Ewers pulls it. And Quinn Ewers is off to the races here, trying to bring him down, trying to force a fumble. Not quite working as they're down inside the red zone as Judon does dislocate his shoulder. That is killer. So they do jump on this one. We're just going to back them up five. But now we need to bend but don't break 
strike. We need to force them to a field goal here. So I don't know if they're going to quite go to the air here, and they do as they go quick to it, and that could have been an interception. Quinn Ewers just threw it over the top there. Could have been an absolute golden opportunity as Max Melton's actually going to come on a blitz here. This is going to be fun. As we go five wide, we should have a free rusher, and we do, and the pressure does get there. And who else on the sack but the man himself? That's going to be White coming in. And we're going to go ahead and bring another blitz again. But that's going to be the end of the third quarter. The Saints just outdueling us. Our defense not doing what we wanted them to do this to start this season at least. And so we are going to rush a heavy amount again just to try to force something. We're going to back peppers up though in man-to-man -man looks. As we're going to get pressure up the middle. And oh my gosh, that knocked him out of field goal range. As Bearmore gets the sack, I didn't even think about knocking him out of field goal range. I just wanted to force a quick throw, but the pressure came great there as they leaked the running back right away, and that means we had an immediate free rusher on this one, as this is now going to be a very long field goal, and remember, they already missed an extra point, so maybe this could go our way here as the kick goes wide left, and all of a sudden, things are still in our favor, so that is just absolutely huge for us as we're going to go ahead and run here with Bo Nix on a QB draw. Bo Nix juking guys out and just going down, but he gets hurt. There's no way Bo Nix goes down with an injury. Oh my goodness, in week number one, Jackson Dart is going to make his appearance. The former Ole Miss quarterback, who I actually am a pretty big fan of, is going to make his first career throw out to Bringstool, so a rookie-to-rookie -rookie connection. But it does limit our quarterback running ability very much so, because he's only got 83 speed, I think, as we do try to fit this one in, and he is going to fit it in to Jawan Johnson for Jawan's first catch of the season. But Bo Nix bruised his ribs and his injury risk is high, and for that, I'm going to keep him out the rest of this game. I don't want him to get injured this early in the season and suffer a significant injury long-term effects. So it's going to be Dart who's going to have to finish this game for us here as we're going to go out to Demario Douglas for a catch as a good swat comes out. But Dart starting three for three in this game as we are finally going to hand it off and take it away. Is actually Nix comes back in the game. What? So I guess Nix is good to go again. I guess he doesn't want to check himself out. No worries. We're going to roll with Bo Nix then. Just hopefully he doesn't get injured here as we're going to try to scramble it out. And if we can just fit this one underneath, as I tried to set our feet, but we just didn't, we're going to have to take a field goal. So Joey Sly's got a hit from 48 here. We have the wind at our back, so that's going to be huge. As Sly's going to be able to knock this one in. 24 to 26 is the score in this one. I really tried to set our feet on that throw, and I'm surprised Bo Nix came in because I thought I said to take him out. But with eight minutes left in the game, we now made it so a field goal will win it in week number one. And to start the season with a win would be ginormous here as Coleman takes the knee. But it's now going to come down to our secondary. Can we cover the right way? And can we stop the run here with Kamara as we try to go in the middle? But Kamara breaks it out to the outside. Jerome Baker there on the tackle. So not the best start so far in this one. As I expect him to go back to the run here with Williams on the underneath. And they don't. Instead, it is a play action. As it's going to be dropped off here, but CJ Garner Johnson over pursued it. So we need to be able to here to make a play as I'm expecting run, but they just don't go to the run at all. Instead, go to the outside and it is going to be completion after completion here as Quinn Ewers is leading them down the field, almost at 300 passing yards on the day. And maybe what's going to work for us is we go back to those zones that we did or blitzes that we did on the last drive here as they are finally going to go to the run. A stretch play to the outside and we need a good tackle that time from CJ Gardner Johnson and we do left one on one. He needs to make those open field tackles and with it being a third and eight we are bringing the pressure max melton in there at safety as we're just going to sit underneath in this slant concept and it is a breakup not a breakup but a stop before the first down marker as five minutes are left on the clock and it's going to come down to a final drive here if we want this game to go our way but we're going to have to go the distance here as they've done a good job pinning us deep so far in this one as they will do it again but i'm going to try to return this one with Kadarius tony as, as long as the blockings can come up and a juke move to the outside is going to get us up a little bit. But the nice thing is, so far, we're not in, like, a huge rush for time in this one. And with the linebackers seeing like that, is that going to be a blitz? Can I run against this? And we're actually going to try to run. And if the blitz can, or blocks can get picked up, it's going to be Blake Corum off to the races. Blake Corum, a good job down the sideline already on this drive. And maybe it's going to be the running game that's going to get us down the field in this one. Blake Corum doing a good job. Is We do run it the other way. It doesn't quite work. I thought the play was going to go to the right side there. But now Donovan Edwards checking in for his second carry of the day here. We're going to try to run this one again. And as I see the hole opening up a little bit, and he makes third down a lot more manageable. But we're already in fourth down territory, so we're fine. As we're going to bring two drag routes coming out from our two superstar receivers. As we're going to throw this one in the window, and it is knocked down. 
What are you doing, Frank Gore? I thought you had a go route and you are going to open it up. So it now opens to a fourth down. And because we didn't get any yards out of it, I'm just going to punt this ball away and try to make another stop on defense. I think that's a better way to do it. So that's a little bit of a killer there is if we can get a good, good. We pinned him deep on that. But is man-to-man -man going to be the answer? Are they going to try to run out the clock? Starting out with Williams, I definitely would expect a run from them as they are going to go play action instead. There's no way as they take a deep shot. Christian Gonzalez getting the tip up and it's tipped up one more time. Justin Matabuke goes down with an injury. Injury, but Christian Gonzalez making a fantastic play there as this is where I do expect the runs to come out We're gonna bring the safeties down in the box just a little bit here as they do run it up the middle and it opens up for Williams to get the first down Oh my goodness as with Camaro They are now chewing the clock as I do are gonna go with the run and we're gonna be all over that one And we're gonna burn a timeout early two minute warning is also gonna be there to help us out We are definitely gonna need Justin Matabuke back in this game So he does check in it was only a low injury warning, but they do go play action there's no way, and this play comes out, and they just throw the ball away. Abdul Carter did a great job getting back in coverage there, so a terrible play call from the Saints, and it looks like they're going to try to throw it here on this third down and not take it to the two-minute, not force us to use a timeout, and we just need to make sure to not let up a first down completion here, but a sack comes out, and that's White with the sack. Terrible clock management here from the Saints. Terrible play calls here from the Saints, and all we need is a field goal, and we're going to have great field position after this punt here, hopefully with a good Kadarius Tony return. Can he make a huge play here? Can we get this block to come up? We're going to take it right-hand side. Juke it back in the middle. We're almost to midfield. We're going to try curls to start here. It's underneath. Maybe we could fit it in the middle, and it's intercepted. There's no way I thought we could fit it into that right side. We could try to make a stop here, but will it work? It'll definitely, definitely be hard here as we come out in a goal line look. We know they're going to run the ball as they do go up the middle here. Camaro's breaking tackles already. We got to burn one. Oh, that's such a tough way to start the season. I thought we were going to be able to fit that ball in there as they are going to go ahead and actually take a knee here. Is the game over clockwise? But they are going to line up now looking like they're going to be ready to run the ball. I'm going to guess run to the left-hand side here with Carter. We just got to get some sort of play working as it is going to be a run. It's a counter. They countered against it. Oh, my goodness. And Williams off to the races, and that is going to be the game. Oh, that is such a killer for us. The Saints walk away with a win in week number one. This was a game that we needed to win, I think, with our schedule. But that one does suck. We let up so many explosive plays. But we're going to take it now to the end screen. And so we did walk away with the loss, but we were almost able to make the playoffs last year while starting the season 0-4. So we no, this is going to be a long, grindy season. Just some mistakes that we need to clean up in the big play department and in the interceptions department. Bo Nick, still a decent game from him. Just the one pick was his fault. The other one wasn't, as he did overall have a pretty decent day. I'm not going to complain at that. Just running the football, though. 4.2 yards per carry. I want to try to get up to 4.5. Bo Nix ran the ball well. Frank Gore, Donovan Edwards came in for some tough runs. But receiving Harris and Demario Slayton across the board. A lot of good guys getting receptions. Defensively, though, Keon White coming in for two sacks is massive. But we gave ourselves an opportunity. Just put in, couldn't pull through. We have to look on now to week number two. So we're here into our second game now, and this is a big one against the New York Jets. Sauce Gardner, Quinn Williams, Derek Brown. That defense got even scarier, especially with Derek Brown joining the roster. They're rated an 85 overall, so they do have a little bit of weaknesses, and I think that's in their secondary. Going past Sauce Gardner, Avane Maddox is their second corner on their roster. That's not that great. And then their linebacking core, not the craziest. Zaire Franklin's there, who in my opinion, is a phenomenal linebacker in this NFL. But maybe that's where we can attack them today. Offensively, though, Rodgers did retire. If we go over here to players, retired players, sorted by quarterback. Aaron Rodgers at the age of 40 did retire. He still retired at a 79 overall, so he retired on the top of his game. But Russell Wilson also did retire, too. Dropped all the way down to a 79 or 69 overall. That is crazy. But looking at this Jets team right now, Carson Beck is their quarterback in his first ever game. 25 of 41. 260 yards, one interception. Running the ball, though, they had their success, and we need to make sure today to shut down the run against them. But it's Garrett Wilson all the way down here, two catches, eight yards. While Tyler Board, Marquise Brown led the league or led the way for the Jets receiving wise. We're definitely going to need our offensive line to step up today. You saw the stats after week number one. We still do have some of these injuries that we need to worry about. Luckily enough, we get Kobe Bryant, Hunter Henry, and Ernest Brown back next week. The Jets with injuries, they're going to be down a left tackle with Vashanu 
being injured, so their offensive line is going to be a little bit worse. And Bryce Huff, luckily enough, he's injured because of how good that Jets defensive line is. They lost one of them, and it still doesn't seem like anything. But Carter Warren's in there starting with Jonah Williams. Both guys not very good. That's where I want to take advantage of them today. Judon's got to have a big game. White's got to have another big game. He came in for us and with two sacks was absolutely incremental in our almost win, but we definitely need to win this game. I don't want to fall to 0-2 to start the season, but Bo Nick still will remain the starter. Completion percentage was very, very good, and actually looking at where he kind of rated up in terms of the other quarterbacks in the league. Number 23 in terms of rating, so not too bad, but interceptions-wise, a lot of those young quarterbacks struggled. Anthony Richardson, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, C.J. Shroud, Carter Bradley playing over there for San Francisco because Brock Purdy was down, Gardner Minshew. A lot of the younger quarterbacks did struggle, even Carson back through the interception, and we're actually ra rated as favorites against the Jets, which is such an awesome feeling. So for two games in a row, we've rated favorites. We got to be able to win this one, though. But third down conversions is where we dominated. The Jets only sitting at 25%, as they went for fourth down four times in their game. They did put up 36 points in a loss. Oh, they allowed 36 points. Jaden Daniels popped off again. He's up to a 90 overall now. He's actually insane. But let's go into practice to make sure nobody else gets injured. And against Carson Beck today, I think our biggest thing is make him beat us. And I want to stop the run, but I want to stop the outside run because I feel like that's where we got burned last week against a much less or worse running back. Brees Hall is one of the best in the league, but Bo Nix is going to have to have a good game. I want to be able to throw it short. I want to be able to get our guys out in open space, and I do want to throw two touchdown passes. That's going to seem like a pretty good goal for today. Running against them is going to be tough. Maybe Donovan Edwards will get a couple more carries today. I think only had three last week. Blake Corum took a majority of the carries. Let me know, guys, if you guys think I should mix it up a little bit more and have the other Michigan running back get more time. But looking at practice right here, I just want to make sure nobody else is suffering from any injuries going into this week. I cannot wait till we get Kobe Bryant back. But against the Jets wide receiving core today, we are going to make a depth chart change, and that's going to be benching Denzel Burke. I just don't think he's ready yet. And I hate to say it, we saw the mistakes he made against Chris Olave, and I don't think Max Melton's quite ready either. So what we're going to go ahead and do is move in CJ Gardner Johnson there and then at the safety spot we could put Melifon Wu there but I'm actually going to put Javon Bullard there at the safety spot only because he's playing that song safety look and his strength is a little bit higher than Melifon Wu's and Cine and I think Javon Bullard when he's played for us this year has played pretty well even last season he ended up the season with I think 20 something tackles and did pretty well coming down when we needed him to but that'll allow continuously to have CJ Gardner Johnson play corner and Christian Gonzalez play in the slot for us but no big roster moves for this week and it's going to be time to jump right into the game but we did get a practice player signed and the PJ Jules over to the Falcons now so he's going to be backing up Jesse Bates there but we have to take down the New York Jets. Can we do it? Let's jump right in. We're a higher overall. Bo Nix is going to remain the starter until he proves otherwise. The completion percentage took a big jump, but I did forget to change the numbers for Bringstool, so he's still going to be rocking 12 today, so forgive me, forgive me. I'm going to wait for the IG comments to roast me on that one. But we are winning the coin toss. Going to be kicking this one off. Sly's going to boot it deep, and coming out for the Jets is going to be Carson Beck, who's the new age Chad Pennington for them. Can he do enough to lead these Jets to the playoffs? And I'll be honest, the whole AFC East took a massive step backwards with Aaron Rodgers gone and Tua Tungavailoa gone. So it really is the Bills division to win. But at the same time, we could have some success with it. But I'm going to switch to a zone because I do not like Etier Gross Matos man-to-man -man here. As this is a run with Brees Hall to start and CJ Gardner-Johnson's coming downhill for a solid tackle. I cannot have Etier Gross Matos man-to-man -man there. I do not like. And getting into the right defensive personnel is going to be a massive, massive thing for us I cannot have any bad matchups across the board because honestly that's where we've lost at a lot of points so far this season Bentley's also another guy who if we need to move on from him I definitely will as they go to the outside and a great breakup right there for Christian Gonzalez that's the type of stuff that we need from him but I cannot wait till Kobe Bryant comes back because he may earn a starting job for us here as on a third and four and we're gonna go to a heavy blitz as they are gonna go to the air here right away can we get pressure Carson Beck, this one going across the middle, and it is complete to Christian Gonzalez, but we did deliver a big hit with Abdul Carter there. I'm not playing for an injury, but, you know, that definitely wouldn't hurt. It's Cade Stover's in there. He looks like he won the starting tight end job for them as they go quick to the outside. That one doesn't go anywhere. Once again, Christian Gonzalez there in coverage, and I really need him to step up for us. He needs to be the difference maker in this season for us in the secondary. If we're going to have issues to start out the season, 
I need him to step up and make great plays for us. As quick to the outside, Jabril Peppers now locking down Cade Stover. Even in the pros, you get a little Michigan on Ohio State action there as they go five wide once again here. Cena checks in, and instead of bringing him on a blitz, I'm going to kind of roam with him in the middle. Stop anything quick as they go to the air. As I do see it, we're going to sit on this stopper as they go out the outside and a dropped interception by CJ Gardner Johnson after a bad pass by Carson Beck. The Jets are having the same problem that we're having. They're their quarterback, the completion percentage isn't quite there, and that's where we're having a little bit of luck in this game. The Bo Nix problems that started for us last year seems to be the problem with the Jets this year as Kadarius Tony is going to return this one because they're going to put some backspin on it as we're going to go out here and just get at least up with Melo Fine. We setting a good block. We just went off it the wrong way, but Bo Nix, I need him to come back out. I need him to lead a good drive here in this game. We need to blow out these Jets and solidify ourselves as, hey, we're here in this league. I don't want to get off to a slow start again and have to battle our way back. But we are going to try one run here with the Blake Corm to start off, and Blake Corm's got to the edge here a little bit. Blake Corm outrunning the defender here. He picks up a good run, and with nobody there to set the edge, great blocking coming out from Makai Becton as well as Jawan Johnson there. Johnson really criminally underrated for his run blocking ability at the tight end spot, and that's why I like him. That's also why I like Bringstool. I think Bringstool could be very good in his own right as we are going to go to the air here quick, just quick and underneath. Two Douglas pick up a couple of yards off of it, but Ryan Kelly goes down with an injury, so Cole Strange or Ezra Cleveland are going to have to come in at that center spot. I think it's going to be Ezra, which I think that's going to be a perfect look for us, and it is Ezra Cleveland in the middle, so no worries there. Looks like man-to-man -man coverage again. We're going to try to scramble out and just force this one here, and it is going to be complete a lucky pass, but Darius Slate and goes down with an injury so two rough injuries to start this game for us hopefully both of them can come back as ryan kelly will come back for us and on a third and one we are going to try to run this one here just a little stretch play to the outside try to find a good turn up I and mean, actually we're just gonna have to beat to the edge here blake Corum, luckily enough getting it there the edge wasn't quite set it was a weak side run and darius slayton with a pectoral strain we're going to keep him in this game i don't want him to leave I'm, if he's going to go down again then we'll definitely keep him out but i really thought we weren't going to be able to run the ball but we're having some success here in this game it's a trap play up the middle and blake Corum's Got another big run. Good movement from our interior. But now Frank Gore checks in at the running back spot. And he's going to have nothing going for him. Zaire Franklin there is making a good stop on the run. So we need this first down conversion here. We're going to just scramble out here with Knicks. And I could dump it off to Frank Gore. But I'm just going to scramble up for this first down. Nothing crazy. I saw the inside swim move come out. Or inside spin move. And just being able to get around that is huge. As we're going to do another stretch play to the weak side here. As long as Jawan Johnson and Mike Anawano can set that edge. We'll be chilling. As we do get a good carry here. Blake Blake Corm off to the races. Jermaine Johnson's the one who we're able to beat there. And we're just taking advantage of this edge. And we're just running it down their throats right now. As long as our receivers can block, we'll continue to have some success. The cutback lane doesn't open up for Frank Gore. Blake Corm's having great success. Frank Gore, on the other hand, not so much. So now to the air. And we're going to try to get it out to Harrison. And he's got a completion for the first down. Harrison... Started off the season hot in game number one. I want to be able to continue that throughout the entire season. And with Sauce Gardner lining up on top of Slayton, that's just really been a blessing for Harrison. I'll take that all day long as we're going to throw inside here and it's dropped interception. Really just a bad route by Demario Douglas getting bumped off two outside. When they go the too high safety look, you want to be able to split that post. We're really just having no success with that one. Is we're going to try to scramble out here. I'm just going to try to throw this one away, set up a better third down. I was going to go out to Douglas, but I scrambled out maybe a little too quickly. And I don't want this drive to die right here. I'm looking backside, maybe Harrison, but with the flood concept to the right side, it could open up for us. And we're just going to go out to Jawan Johnson. If he could turn up the field, that'd be nice, but just not enough. And we're going to just take three and move on. Sly was one for one in week number one. Can we continue his streak here? I don't want to miss any field goals this whole season. That's my goal. Sly nails it in for the second one of the year, but we do jump out to the early lead against the Jets in the first quarter. A good first drive showing run and pass. I think one of the biggest things for us is just continue to throw pressure here is we're going to bring Abdul Carter on a blitz. It's going to be backside and we're going for the interception. Christian Gonzalez, come on. He went up for the SWAT instead. I'll take it. But so far the blitz has been working for us. Abdul Carter we're doing a really good job of getting pressure. I think adding him to our defense was huge for us because he kind of is a little bit positionless. If you give it a sense, we can play him on the edge. We can play him up the middle on a blitz and he's actually pretty decent dropping into coverage. Was it worth taking him at the eighth overall pick in the draft? I honestly think so. But at third and six, they are going to go to the air here. I'm not going to bring pressure. We're going to look for something quick with Hardman. 
as they do go quick underneath is it's going to be back taken off here and can we stop him before he gets the first down no he scrambles up for it so a little bit of an l there and the drive will continue they finally hear a stack in the box and so i don't know why they haven't ran with Brees hall more after seeing what the saints did to us as they just go play action again and we're going to run deep and it's cade stover getting open but a good lock on there from bentley in coverage just barely that should have been a massive massive play but in a 4-4 look that's where bentley comes in to play the run he's not used to being able to play the pass like that so now bullard and cena and are on this second down and they're gonna go nothing crazy here just quick to the outside to cade stover and that's a good tackle by cena his first tackle i think in a patriots uniform but it is another third and six a dual card is gonna be one-on-one -on -one, but if esteem stays in we're gonna go ahead and follow but it is a pass to the outside and a good breakup from jabril peppers beck starting four a ten our secondary stepping up a lot better than they were last week as the jets are gonna punt this one away and this is gonna be another Kadarius tony return but we're gonna have a lot more space in this one to kind of get things working and we're gonna stop break this one to the outside but guy coming right through makes a good tackle we get up to the 15 though but let's put together another good drive let's try to get this one in to the end zone and they're just stacking the box no linebacker help over top so if this run works here we could really open this up a counter look and there's just nothing feasting i thought maybe we could find a hole catch them off guard but that's where their defensive line is just so unbelievably good here they are actually like one of the highest overalls i've ever seen is we're gonna go quick to the angle route and i should have been caught by frank gore we're not able to fit it in, though. We're already in a third and long. And I am looking to the sticks here, but we are running Harrison on a crossing route instead. And we're going to dump it off to him, see if he can run to the sticks. And he will be able to run to the sticks. Linebackers in coverage are not good enough. And we just use his size, athleticism, use him all over the field. He was a jump ball receiver for us in year number one. Coming out, one of my goals was to get him more involved in the crossing route proved true for him last year to have some success but he's left one-on-one -on -one like this all day long like i want to be able to take these like we're going to go out to him right away he should be wide open unless the corner does jump up and knock it down so maybe i'm talking a little too much i do want to make third down a little bit better we're going to go to the run here and there's just nothing working we may have to abandon the run not fully but less in the playbook go do the air just a little bit more as i'm going to try to run crossers to mario i need him to just squeeze his way open here as we're getting pressured right away, luckily enough, we're able to fit it in. Demario Douglas, such a good grab there. Bo Nix, good throw. But we're already to the end of the first quarter. Passing yards, we got 80 so far on the day already. Bo Nix showing much better this year to start the season than he did last year. Last year was so bad, I ended up trading for a quarterback because I was so afraid about just getting a win. But against the safety, Harrison should just absolutely win this one here. And he gets so wide open. Harrison to the edge Harrison making a juke move and Harrison getting us all the way down I loved that coverage look there the linebacker one-on-one -on -one. there's no chance Harrison will win that every single day take advantage of some of these matchups that we're getting and a similar route combination here if we could hit Slayton that'd be so unbelievably nice and we're going to try it, test it to the outside. Slayton bringing it in and Slayton getting into the end zone. There is Slayton, our third best receiver last week, comes in for a massive touchdown this week. We're learning how to spread the ball out. We're learning to take the good throws. This offense is clicking here with Lincoln Riley now at OC instead of Eric Bieniemy. I like the play calling a little bit better coming out from him. And we're having success, just barely able to stretch that ball across. Taking advantage of these linebacker coverage looks that the Jets are giving us, just even though they're one of the best defenses such bad packages they're coming out in and we're making a statement here in this start to the season especially against an AFC East opponent that we are here the Jets last time around when we played them early in the season absolutely demolished us so coming back out with the Jets on offense they I don't know why they haven't been going to the run they should be going to the run more but a good job there by Matthew Judon to make a tackle so far you know unintentionally we're just making Carson Beck beat us, but I'll take this all day long. They're just not going to the run as they do go to the draw play here. In, fa in fact, fake it, and that is a sack coming in. Matabuke getting in there. The new free agent signing making a huge impact play on the second down, making third down so much more difficult for the New York Jets, giving Carson Beck fits. We was able to get in there a little bit. Actually stole half a sack there, but I'll definitely still take it as we're going to sit there with Carter, kind of look for the scramble and another sack coming out. We only brought five-man pressure there, dropped everybody else in coverage with a single high safety look, didn't rush Carter. Was kind of sitting in a QB spy look there, but we're still getting pressure. This Jets offensive line, we knew that they were really bad coming into this week, 
But man, we are just absolutely taking advantage here as we're going to have great field position again. Mate, could we jump up 17 to nothing? I'm going to try to fair catch this one, actually. I don't want to get hit right away. But such a good job so far from our defense making plays is we're going to try to dump this one off. We just get sacked on the screenplay. I need to get that ball out a little quicker. I want to hold him a little bit longer. But Quinn and Williams coming through absolutely a great tackle, great sack there on us. So we are going to go to the ground try to maybe sit actually i don't like it we're gonna go ahead and switch to a play action the same play we ran the touchdown on and if we just drop here swim to the outside we're just gonna dump this one off here to blake quorum just for a couple of yards make third down a little bit more manageable for us but that'll allow us now just to throw straight to the sticks but they're going press coverage across the board so the curl combination probably won't be the most successful instead if we run crossers maybe guys can open up here now i'm just gonna have to try to dump this one off but we have no luck at all jermaine johnson coming in for the sack the Jets really good D-line, even though we're doing well defensively, still giving us fits on offense. And I just need to be able to put this one deep with Barringer. CJ Gunner Johnson there as a gunner is insane for him being a starter, a captain, whatever you want to call it. If we're going to have a good tackle on Mikul Hardman, they're only going to start at the 20-yard line. So far, they're just not running the ball efficiently or successfully. And I want to make sure to continue that up as a jet sweep may be coming out here. And it is. And we're going to be out to the outside. Good tackle there. Yatir Gross Matos gets banged up on the play. Both the guys who already got banged up earlier are already back. No worries. But Yatir Gross Matos is somebody I definitely don't want to lose. But White's going to come in and in replacement. And White was able to make some great plays last time. So if we could just get him to continue it, that would be huge. As it is going to be a pass here. And we're going to run to the outside with it. We're in solid coverage there. As instead, they throw this one deep. And if we could just get an interception, no, the win the jump ball. There's no way. Marquise Brown going up and over the top is criminally insane. That is actually nuts that he wins that jump ball as we jump there. But they do run it. And it is going to be an easy tackle, but the Jets are going to get five yards no matter what on the play. There's no way we lost that jump ball to Marquise Brown. We should have been there. The Yatir Gross Matos upper arm fracture. So, hey, White's going to have to play, but I'm not as worried because of how well White played. But I expect them to go to another run here. Instead, they actually lose it and back it all up. So, a full reset there first and 10. So, we're just going to be chilling in the zone here as Brees Hall is out. As they do go actually to the run. And I'm going to force him back inside. But this team may break in one from Uche. Luckily, Abdul Carter's there to finish it off. Carter's going to be such a big piece of our defense going forward. Kind of all over the place kind of guy. Great compliment to Jerome Baker's speed and athleticism there. And honestly, I think he could be a better version of Bentley. But Garrett Wilson... On a slant route, completely dominates C.J. Gardner-Johnson there off the press, and he's able to get into the end zone, so Carson Beck throws a touchdown. The game's cut back to three, and we should have had a 17. We should have gotten that drive rolling. Unfortunately, we didn't. T.J. Gunner Johnson gets burned, and that is an absolute killer there. We definitely didn't want that to happen, but Frank Gore is going to be the one returning it here. I need some success on the return game, but that one only gets us out to the 18. So can we just dominate this drive through the air? It's as simple as that. Demario Douglas open on the route. He's going to be able to hold on to the ball, and that's a big thing from him. I want to make sure his catching's good this year, but I am just want to continuously go through the air on this drive. We're going to jump this off to Bringstool. Bringstool's going to get upfield. He's actually going to have a lot of running room here. A good stiff arm getting up. And as a replacement for Hunter Henry, I'm very, very excited about this rookie. And honestly, there isn't a rookie that I'm not excited about on our roster. Yeah, maybe we don't have that true 80 overall like Harrison, but these guys are nuts here. As we do go draw up the middle... And it is Frank Gore picking up a great run off of that. The blitz got a little too deep. The draw went underneath. And we did get it to second and one here. But it is a run up the middle. Blake Corum, good first down run. He's a five yards per carry to start this game. A little bit unexpected. But after the runs, another, another play action coming out. We're going to roll out with it. And I see him. Can we just set our feet? Made a great throw here. We just need one guy to miss. But Sauce Gardner is a hard man to juke out. And I'm just in love with the way that Bo Nix is throwing the football right now not a lot of issues across the board as we're going to get out here put Frank Gore in space again and as we were talking about somebody in the comments did mention it he's one of those guys where you just need to give him five to ten touches a game and he's gonna make plays happen he's a real life Darren Sproles and as I was reading it I was going to comment on it earlier but Darren Sproles is a perfect comparison for Frank Gore Jr. right now. The two-minute warning is here, and I'd love to put in a score real quick before this all said and done here in this first half. Is Demario Douglas another good little drag? And we're going to continue to just let the clock run. I have no intentions of trying to go to hurry up just yet. So we're just going to continue to throw the ball here and just leaking out nice and easy. Should be Gore. And if we can just get out of bounds, no worries. You get tackled in. I'll continue to let this clock run. And I would actually like to run the football here, but we're just not going to. Actually, I'm going to step up here. Scramble around with Knicks. And the end zone's open. The patience in the pocket as we step up and scramble. Quinn and Williams got sucked inside. Bo Nix is on a different level right now. 
Bo Nix is playing phenomenal football. I think he's 15 of 19. And just his scrambling ability, everything has taken a massive jump so far this season. He's been showing it. Yes, the two interceptions in week number one. But as long as we can move past those, not have that be a consistent theme, Bo Nix may be up this season. So there is a minute left on the clock, but 17-7 to is such a great score to work with in this one as Mikko Hardman's going to take the knee. But our offense is cooking so far today. I just want to be able to shut down Garrett Wilson, and we should be good. But we know that they are going to go to the air. They're going to try to make things happen. I'm actually going to sit back with that dual carter in the middle just take away any inside routes try to let our corners win their one-on-ones across the board here as it is going to be dumped underneath here javon bullard was actually in such good coverage he could have picked that one off if he just turned in luck with them going to the air it's carson beck really just not having a lot of success as it's really tight coverage from our defensive backs they do go to the hurry up actually and we're just going to sit in the cover three we're going to do nothing crazy here i always want to pass underneath be able to rally and tackle if we need one but they go trips out here to the right side as i am looking to see and carson beck's actually going to take off on this one if we could just deliver a big hit that'd be nice he throws that ball out there but luckily enough he's able to hold on to it and the clock's now at 36 seconds left and they're just trying to plug in a field goal before the end of the half or some sort of points here as we're going to run out as they do throw it to the sideline but they're not in bounds they actually are in bounds on that one i would love a booth review but then again it is only one yard i'm not going to stress out about it too much with a tight end being plugged in on this line i'm looking just somewhere underneath some some under as they do go out the outside and instead we're there in coverage but it is a completion i can joby kind of gets beat there on that outside breaking route in a cover three i need him to be able to get out there but we're now in sitting to man to man instead and this one's going to be passed underneath and a great tackle there from jerome baker as the timeout's called with 20 and with them being inside a field goal range I think I'm only going to rush three we're going to drop everybody else and a pressure with only three get there as they go quick maybe underneath out to the outside and I need you out in that flats better Matthew Judon really needs to get out there because if we let up that play he stays in bounds that's going to be a huge one so let's just make sure no touchdowns and a tackle in bounds does occur here as they throw to the outside it is complete and they're now down to the 10 seconds left in the clock and luckily the time runs out so almost a shot to the end zone there but 17 to 7 is your score going into halftime I when they completed that ball I didn't even assume that they were not going to be able to get a chance to get another playoff but with such a deep pass and getting tackled in bounds it just worked out perfectly Carson Beck tried to take a shot didn't quite work but this is a funny game to look at the new quarterback of the Carolina Panthers to a tongue of Iloa because Bryce Young has been horrible now getting beat by his Dolphins and Cam Ward now at quarterback. But Saquon Barkley still being injured over for the Giants. Have suffered a really gruesome injury at the end of last season. Drake May throwing an interception again. So that brings his up to three on the day. But this is what I wanted to see. The Bills are losing right now to the Texans. And that's a huge thing for us. So starting the second half, we do have the ball here. Frank Gore, I need you to bust off a return soon. I think that would be the best thing to happen. As, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, we were almost able to bust one off. Frank Gore Jr., absolutely electric. He is Devin Hester 2.0. He is Darren Sproles, whatever you want to call it. He's a playmaker, man. Just give him the ball. And so let's continue to cook here on offense, have our success, as we're just going to go out to the running back. Frank Gore can't make the juke move work, so we do lose two on the play. 16 to 20 is the best completion percentage that we have had all season long so far. So I am in love with that. Is a good block pickup from Donovan Edwards, the running back. Luckily, that block was picked up because that run would have went for nothing sucks though that the run didn't go for a lot but we're already in a third and nine and if i can just get a settle route can we force that one in no we do get sacked i was trying to scramble out to see if juan johnson leaked out he leaked out just a second too late so to start this half we are punting away the football but i'm still very excited with how our team has played so far I need C.J. Gardner-Johnson to get down there, force the fair catch, and we do. So they started the 19-yard line. I love the way our team's playing so far. If you guys are new here, make sure to like and subscribe. Man, we got a ton of Patriots franchise coming, and I can't tell you enough, dude. I am so unbelievably blessed. Like, I always do this for fun. I've been doing this franchise mode on TikTok now for, like, a couple of months. Actually, a couple, almost a couple of years as this pass across the middle is broken up. But I'm doing it for since the end of 2022. It's now 2024, and I just finally decided to make the conversion over to YouTube after getting heckled enough by other content creators. And the support, I didn't think it was going to be there. 
but I am so unbelievably blessed from you guys. It has been awesome as a pass underneath to Boyd does get the first down. So thank you guys so much for that. As we're going to get back into this game, though, settle down, make some good plays. It is a cover three. We're going to jump out and it's underneath and it's picked off. Jerome Baker gets our first interception of the year. Carson Beck with the mistake. Just when we jump back into it, Jerome Baker getting our first turnover of the year. Last year, we got our interception in week number two, but then after that, we didn't get an interception until week number 10. Hopefully that's not the trend now as we're going to run to this weak side and a really bad Bad job at the edge there, but Corn breaking tackles, fighting forward to make it a gain of nothing. A tough run from him, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Our defensive backs are absolutely disgusting as we're just going to try to scramble out here. If we can try to throw this and it's intercepted. Oh my goodness, Harrison stopped running his route. You've got to be kidding me. I tried to throw to the sideline. Avante Maddox picked it off. I was expecting Harrison to come across and pin this one right at the sideline, but you see he slowed down right here running. I wanted him to get in front of this pass, and it just didn't work. So such a bad miscommunication there leads to an interception on our end. But we're just keeping the Jets in this game as they go quick toss to the outside. Jerome Baker's there, but we get juked out. And Brees Hall continues to break tackles after a gain of about six. But that is just a killer. I wanted to turn that interception into points here as they go another pitch play. But we're there. CJ Gardner-Johnson gets juked out again. But on this third and two, we're going to be bringing the heat a little bit on Beck again. I want to see if they do go to the run. And it looks like they actually will go play action here. But we got pressure in the face and that forces a bad throw dylan cook goes down for the jets at tackle so they're gonna have even worse worse offensive linemen coming into this game for them so we're actually in a pretty decent spot and as long as our defense can keep cooking up great pass rushes like that we will be absolutely chilling in this game is they're gonna pin us deep and that was almost a roughing the punter but this one's gonna land all the way down to the one yard line it does backspin a little bit and i'm not gonna touch it i don't want to risk it We've had problems last year trying to field punts like that where we did muff one. So we are backed up a lot here. And I'm telling you right now, as long as Jermaine Johnson gets sealed by Jawan Johnson there, and then the linebacker can get got, this could be a very nice run. This could be a very nice run. It is out to the outside. Blake Corum, can we break the stiff arm? And we can't, but that's still such a big run. Blake Corum having much better success today. And it really is that outside run that's working for us. We are going to go to the air here and we're going to have to scramble out. And I see him deep, but I'm not going to test it here. Instead, we're going to try to juke with Bo Nix. And Bo Nix continues to make things happen with his legs. And I'm just absolutely loving this so far. It's quick underneath slant route. Caught Harrison off to the races, beating Avante Maddox. That's the matchup that we can take advantage of. And I still can't believe that they're taking Sauce Gardner and going man-to-man -man with Darius Slayton and not... Marvin Harrison Jr. This is just game plan oriented, baby. All day long, we'll take advantage of it. And we're just going to continue to try to feed here as we scramble out. I'm just going to drop this one off to the tight end as he is broken up. And looking at the draft class, everybody in here has gotten playing time already. Denzel Burke, a little bit rough in his first start. Jackson Dart, though. Hey, man, he was three for three when he came out for us. Obviously, Bo Nix came back, but we were chilling as we go run here. Frank Gore, I tried to cut that one back, but we are stuck in a third and 10. With Harrison backside one-on-one, -on -one, maybe we could go to him here. And with the guy leaving, can we force it into him? And he does make a great catch. I was waiting for that corner to eventually move and go on to Frank Gore Jr. And we're just taking advantage of Maddox once again. Yes, he has the interception, but he's about to let up 100 and something yards today. As we're just going to continue to go out the outside, drop this one off. Is this Theo Johnson? And it is Theo Johnson a good grab. Theo, I think, only had three catches last year for a total of like eight yards. And with guys getting injured like Hunter Henry, the ability for him to come in and make plays is huge. We are just going to continue as we're going to get hustled here. Jermaine Johnson off the edge is just too quick. That's almost his third sack today. These long developing play actions, that's the only risk of it. If our offensive line can't hold, we're kind of screwed. But we need our offensive line to hold up here as we are going to try to take a shot as we're just going to have to scramble out. I'm just going to dump this one off. Jermaine Johnson's got a lot of runners. Jawan Johnson's got a lot of room to run here. I'm so used to saying Jermaine Johnson's name just because the amount of sacks he's gotten today. But on a third and three, this is huge. And they are rolling a safe down to the box. This is obviously man-to-man -man here. And we're going to hit quick to Kadarius Tony. And Kadarius Tony's got the catch for the first down. So we're consistent. And we're consistent in making the smart plays here. Is out to the outside. Douglas, and as long as these blocks can get picked up here, Douglas is going to have a good run. He hits a stiff form. So Demario Douglas, the little man, even getting a stiff arm to push in there. That's awesome some for us and if Harrison can win this outside leverage here he could get in and he does Harrison as long as we can hit him he's gonna walk into the end zone Harrison quick to the outside a good throw coming out and we get a nice touchdown to go up 24 to 7 in this ball game our offense clicking Bo Nix 
having a great start to the season from him. Yes, the interceptions have happened. We all know that. But across the board, he's leading very, very solid drives for us. Our offensive weapons have only gotten better. Even running the ball, passing the ball, the receiving core that we've now built up is actually pretty dominant. Even Kadarius Tony getting involved. And looking at the bottom of the screen, Tua Tungavailoa is getting absolutely murked by his former team. We need the Dolphins to lose some games with Cam Ward at quarterback. We can't have Cam Ward go crazy. Let's see as they do go to the run here. We're going to seal this outside leverage and Javon Ballard's there for the tackle. The Georgia safety, the former rookie, is making plays for us as the fourth quarter does start. Our offense is cooking. Brees Hall has had no luck here in the run. But they've also went away from it more than I thought. And so we're just going to continue to drop in the pass and make other guys beat us. They do go to try to jump this one off. But Matabuke gets in there for a sack. So our big free agent making another play here on second down. Making another third down very, very difficult. And we're just going to drop into a cover three. Only rush four here once again. And I would love another interception here. Let's see how we what we can do. Beck's going to take the drop. I'm expecting him just to throw it underneath, and he does, but that pass doesn't even get in there. As pressure got in his face from Matabuke again, he completely dominated on the inside. I want to go to the instant replay and check that one out. And looking at it, he did get double teamed off the rip, but fought through, split the double team, and got pressure in the face. That's huge. So that's a huge thing for us, and that's going to be a holding call on the edge there as we get no good return coming out for Kadarius Tony. I saw the holding call all the way. It was on the gunner there, because I think that was... Is that Denzel Burke that was out there blocking? And it was. So Denzel Burke has had a rough start to his career for us. Maybe Max Melton's the answer there. Move him farther, farther down the depth chart with how bad he's been playing. But Frank Gore on the run, we're going to let the blocks kind of develop, but still nothing going on. But maybe a face mask, actually, as instead it's actually going to be a holding call on us. So that's going to back us up a little bit. Ryan Kelly on the inside, his second holding call on the year. So that's not a fun one to have there as we just try to dump this one off with pressure in our face again. Blake Corum actually making a solid juke move there, only to gain four yards. But Jermaine Johnson beat Mekhi Becton off the edge one more time, and that's just something I need to be concerned about because we kind of banked on Mekhi Becton coming into this season. If Jermaine Johnson's got two and a half sacks, I am going to be a little bit worried as a screenplay here. We're dumping off to Blake Corum. As long as these blocks can get... Oh, the block doesn't get picked up. I didn't hit it inside enough there. So on third and three, we have to take a shot here. Try to get a first down. As I'm going to roll out, we're rolling out to the wrong side here. If I could lead him to the sideline, we are going to be able to fit the ball in. Beat Maddox Harrison, such a big body, almost like a basketball player, the way he's boxing him out here. But that was a crazy pass from Bo Nix. And this is the difference maker here. We're able to set our feet, deliver a throw with a man in our face, and make that kind of completion. That's something we haven't had in Patriots Dynasty so far. And so the Jets are going to have to pass their way back into this game, I'm pretty sure. So I'm not expecting too many more runs coming out from Brees Hall. But I am still going to be worried about him because he is an absolute monster. They do go out to him in the passing game, breaking one guy miss, almost breaking a second tackle there. But we are going to come out, actually, and bring the pressure. As long as all the motions work correctly, as we do have Jabril Peppers is out of position and we are going to be bringing some blitzes they throw underneath and a good breakup from Jabril actually a weird passing concept on that one but it's all worked in our favor and if you take away the 47 yard bomb that was completed to Marquise Brown we are completely shutting down this Jets offense today we're having absolutely luck across the board as they do take a deep shot here to Garrett Wilson and it is going to be Denzel Burke I think who did get beat there and I can't go into the instant replay I can't see who that was it was number 22 it was Denzel Burke who did get beat so that's just sucky. Denzel Burke continues to get burned here as they go to the outside, beat him one more time. But the completion goes backwards, so we'll give him that time. But they're once and again motioning around. Let's hopefully we're in the right coverage here as I can't move anybody. And we're in man-to-man -man against Brees Hall, but a sack up the middle. Matabuke, two and a half on the day, matching Jermaine Johnson's numbers. That's beautiful right there to see. We're just having a level of success we're not used to as somebody does jump right there. On a third and 15, Justin Matabuke, two and a half sacks. I'm so happy we picked him up where we can get pressure on a four-man look now. And that was a big concern that you guys all saw in year number one. Yes, Matthew Jonah every once in a while, but when he went down with an injury, it was really weird having the blitz to get pressure. But with how good Matabuke has been playing for us, I'm very, very excited for the future of this team here. As Garrett Wilson's one-on-one -on -one with not a good player as another sack comes through. barrymore has got a sack and a half on the day as they're now going to the hurry up with one fourth down. That is actually kind of wild here. So hopefully we can complete this as they go out to the outside, miss the throw, and our defense stands up, gets two huge sacks, and really showing 
their teeth here. I absolutely love this. So I do want to start trying to chew the clock a little bit here in this game. 24 to 7. I just want to continue and contain this lead in this one as we're going to run up the middle. Not a lot moving for us, but Blake Corum, he had so many games over 100 yards rushing last season, and this season hasn't come close yet. Will he come close? I don't really know. I don't know if we've seen the best of Blake Corm with his rookie explosion, but I hope not here as a run to the outside as we're going to have the edge, but a holding call is going to come out from Makai Becton. I'm pretty sure that was Makai Becton, and it's on Sydney Sow, so we only need one more lineman to get a holding call, and every single one's officially got it. Holy crap. These are just killers for us, and I just want to make a pass here and complete this pass in bounds as we're just going to try to dump it off. Donovan Edwards, not a lot of space to work with, but he's breaking tackles and falling forward. That counts technically as a rush, so congratulations. You still got rushing stats in this game. So with us not wanting to push the ball too far downfield, risk an interception, risk a major turnover, we're just going to go to a screenplay here and get Frank Gore in space. But the blocks are picked up, actually. And Frank Gore, can we make it work? Breaking almost tackles there. We took a lot of time off the clock, had a pretty solid drive, but I'm going to go ahead and try to pin them deep here on this one. Barringer into punt. I don't want this one to bounce into the end zone. Instead, it is going to land right at the four-yard line. And we're just going to sit right here. Oh, I thought we were going to try to block it up, but Mapu's able to down it. Mapu, not a lot of playing time today from him, but I'm not too worried because I definitely feel like he'll find the field just a little bit more. I just think Abdul Carter is just better right now than how he is, but I definitely think of maybe moving him in for Bentley as they do go play action. They're going to try to whip it right over our heads. I'm waiting for it, but another sack coming in. Matabuke doing it again, only rushing four. We're getting pressure in the face, and Carson Beck is just waiting so long to make reads. It is perfect. Are these coverage sacks? I don't really know if you'd count them as coverage sacks. Is he scrambling out again? Pressure in his face. This is just absolutely beautiful everything that we've been trying to accomplish is showing itself right here we're just having success they are going to take a deep shot up and over the top can we get in there and it is completed you have to be kidding me it's just Garrett Wilson outrunning CJ Gardner Johnson that's it that's the only thing that happened on that play we know they're going to continue to go to the air I can't believe we let that up as Beck's going to scramble here and it's going to be Abdul Carter and Jerome Baker there. They're just going to sit in this hurry up, just motion guys around. So we're just going to try to get an interception. That'd be awesome here. It's up and over the top. Jerome Baker is able to knock it out on Marquise Brown. So we're actually going to sit in a zone coverage look instead. I think I'm going to get away from man to man for the rest of this game and just allow they do want to complete passes just take it underneath here as Carson Beck's actually going to scramble and Carson Beck scrambling far down the field getting a little bit giddy there in the pocket I mean I would too if you've given up as many sacks as the Jets have given up today but we're gonna have to be more cognizant of that here as I'm expecting them to maybe go underneath and we're there right away to break it up I just want to allow no more touchdowns in this game if they take a field goal that's fine but I don't want to allow any more touchdowns as they are going to go quick to the end zone here. And it is a solid breakup by C.J. Gardner-Johnson. But Justin Matabuke gets banged up again. Hopefully it isn't a big injury from him. Because of the day that he's had, it has been absolutely insane. Because we're going to drop with Carter here into the middle of third and ten. Bringing a little bit of pressure here across the middle. But we're there to make the tackle and hold him from the first down. As it's going to be fourth down. And they are going to go for it here. And just a quick snap as they go quick to the outside. And we're there to make the tackle. But it was a little bit off center. The guys weren't quite ready. As the two minute warnings are now going to stop the clock. But Justin Matabuke, bruised elbow. We're going to bench him for the rest of this game. He's done. We won. And they are going to go to the air one more time. And I just want to be able to make an easy stop. As I'm looking across the middle here. He's running. And he throws across his body. Wow. Okay. Beck still making plays. Don't get me wrong. Gets in for his second passing touchdown of the day. Marquise Brown. But that should be all she wrote in this one. Hopefully, though, it still is a 10-score game. We have to be able to get two first downs. And that should seal it. I just, you know, something crazy could happen, but I'm just going to make sure about it. And coming out in the onside kick, look, I just want to be able to recover this as it is going to be Demario Douglas not being able to touch it, but they touched it just a little bit too early. So we're going to have great field position on this one. And let's just try to run out this clock here. They know that we know that they know that we're running the ball here. So they're going to be coming heavy in it, but we're going to run to the outside and Blake Corum is going to win this game. Hopefully right here, a good run down the sideline he's almost going to top 100 on that run so all we need is three more yards for him to get 100 can we do it right here Blake Corm on this run up the middle not going to find it there they call a timeout but a stretch play here to the outside if Bringstool can get to that edge that'd be huge as we're actually going to try to cut this one back up the middle and that should be enough to get Blake Corm up over 100 yards Makai Becton is now going to be the difference maker in this one can he seal the edge is it's going to be Donovan Edwards can he truck his way through up the middle fighting forward a fourth in goal look and so with Sly we are going to take this field goal 
nothing crazy. I don't want to risk it. Don't want to go for it on fourth and goal. So we didn't take a lot of time off the clock, so it's a little bit worrisome, but we are going to give the ball back to the Jets here. They're not going to return this one because of how deep we booted it. We know they're, they're going to try to pass the ball to end this game. Let's get a turnover. Let's send it to the title screen finally here as they are running four verticals, and I see him trying to chuck this one deep, and we're going to intercept it. Come on, that was the easiest interception of your life, and you dropped it, Ivan Joby. The pressure's still getting there a little bit, as they are maybe going to dump it off. Instead, just try to chuck it deep. And he does have the burners on. There's no way they complete another big pass, and Carson Beck now passes 300 passing yards on the day. Oh my goodness, that's killing me. I can't believe we're having that happen, because they do just spike it here with the clock continuing to run down. They're trying everything they can to get back into this game, as they are going to scratch. So here we go it is going to be another we're going to look okay we're in a cover three can we please cover the edges like that i want to pass to go underneath it's just not hitting garrett wilson over 150 on the day so between him and chris olave we've gotten burned back to back days as their first and goal looking to score once again here as they go quick on underneath, maybe? No. And they said he Carson Beck just throws it out. And I just want an interception. I want to end this game without giving up another score as they throw this one up and over now. Coverage is kind of on lock right now. But I am going to risk it and go a little bit of man-to-man -man coverage. I'm looking for anything quick and underneath with Carter. We could just try to end it here as it is going to be up and underneath. It is going to be a score. Cade Stover now gets it. So the Jets up to 21. So it's 21-17 left in the game. The Jets are going to take the field goal. So it's going to be 21-27. to Still anybody's game, which sucks. But there is 30 seconds left. I just need to recover this and be done. Please. Trying to run out the clock here at the end of the game. The Jets are killing us. As we are going to recover this one. It's going to be Darius Slayton. And that's going to be all she wrote. But that's going to be it for this episode. We're only doing two games today. Make sure to like and subscribe. This is going to be the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what roster moves you want to see, and as always, I will see you in the next one.